Welcome to It's Not What You Think, episode 24, recorded on August 12th, 2021. Ellie Cohn was born in Jerusalem in 1949. He is a direct student of the living karate master, Mr. Oshima. He was the first Israeli to receive the highest rank in Shotokan Oshima Dojo, the fifth degree black belt. Ellie also holds the rank of fifth dan in Iaido, Japanese swordsmanship, and first dan, first degree black belt in Kendo. Ellie shares with us how he ran into a terrorist attack, disabling one of the terrorists and saving many lives in the process. He served in the Knesset, the Israeli parliament in 2002. He served as Israel's ambassador to Japan 2004 through 2007. I was very excited to be interviewing Ellie, who has been an inspiration to me throughout my martial arts lifetime. And I was finally able to confirm some of the real time martial arts stories I'd heard about him over the years. I know you will be inspired too. It's Not What You Think podcast is available on YouTube and Spotify. So please like, comment, share, or subscribe when you watch or listen to the podcast. That support is enough to continue to allow us to produce this show. Our interviews are with people who may have opinions different from yours or mine. So while we keep an open mind, just remember, it's not what you think. Good morning. Good evening, Ellie. Welcome to It's Not What You Think. How is your How is your week so far? Well, it's, you know, it's a Corona time, so it's actually easy going. So I cannot go to Japan. I do business with Japan, but uh, I still practice karate. I write books, and I still try to maintain some business uh, with Japan between Israel and Japan. Good. So you're pr- you're productive. Uh, you know, Israel was so far ahead of the curve with this coronavirus. It was like, wow, it was great. But yeah. but now it's starting again. There is another type, and there is you know traveling people coming back bringing some so we still we have one million people that uh, in the risky group in a risky risky line over 50 or 60 that didn't take so for 60 one million people is still like 20 percent or something so of course of course we urge them to do that well you know what they say in a, tell me if you've heard this one before in a hundred mile race if you've run 99 miles you're only halfway there yeah, that's always, always right. <laughs> the, last, the, the last, yeah. Special training, what do you mean? The last practice, until the last practice, it's nothing. It's not finished. Uh, yep, exactly. I, I didn't make that quote up. I, I, I'd like to say I did, but I didn't. So, you know, one of us, you know, I met you 35 years ago in Manhattan. I don't know if you remember. One of us looks exactly the same, and it's not me. Oh, really? You think so? <laughs> Some people say something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. So two days ago, I was I gave a practice to the all karate teachers in Israel, all style, not not our style. It's the first practice they do after the corona, and the Israel Shotokan Oshima Dojo decided to join the federation again because they started to do politics. We went out when they started to manage and they asked, "Please come back. We are the largest by far in I'm Israel." Sure. Yeah. So we joined and they asked me, would you give us the first practice, you know? So when, 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 you, when you see that, you know, the people are suspicious because it's a new generation. They don't know who you are exactly, you know? So in order to calm down everyone, yeah, maybe I'll use this, I'll use this example when we will talk about other things. But there, there are ways to put everyone in the common denominator, not by telling them, oh, you know, I know better, I know this, I will teach you. No, no, no. I have something, maybe it will help you, maybe it's not. Try to use it, you know, try to be humble and not, not uh, try to come from up. Then you, you, miss the tar- you miss the mission, you know. You miss the mission. If the mission was to, to teach them something you want because they will resist. It will not penetrate. Right. Well, you mentioned something a few moments ago. It's like they don't know who you are. Now, I know who you are, of course. But but when you meet people and they don't know your reputation, they don't know that you've got a fifth degree this and this and this and this. There's some guy is going to try to teach me. So, So in some ways, it's a little bit easier. Some ways, it's a little bit harder because you got to walk in there. No reputation now. How do you get their attention? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I did. 
because when you give respect to people and you try to show them that you are not making a game, it's not a game, it's not just to show, we really respect them like a friendly, like looking, we say, looking at their eyes at the same level. And then telling them, listen, you know, I'll tell you the philosophy that, that I, that I'm building this practice, even this small practice, what is the philosophy behind it? And that's, that's, this philosophy is right for religion or for martial art or for music or whatever you take it, you, you name it, doesn't matter. And uh, when I wrote it in the book about Oshima Sensei, then when Oshima Sensei read it, he said, listen, you must be very clear to say when you are talking and when I am talking. <laughs> I told him, no, no, it's your book. Everything I say, it's you. Right. But when I say something, I will say I'm saying. I don't have to say you say. 95% or 99% is your book. But if I say something, so he said, okay, this example you are giving, he said, please say that it's you, not me. <laughs> and then you will understand in a minute why. I told him, listen, when I was in Japan, I saw many martial art teachers and masters and shihas and so many, so many, so many. And for me, the, I started to, I got this example from, from different angles and martial arts the same and religious are the same and philosophy of life the same, it doesn't matter. When we start our way, we are like climbing a mountain. And we are at the base of the mountain. We are so far from each other. We don't see each other at all. We are starting from different angles. There right. is no way to see. Even communication is not so good. So, 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 and then we start to climb because each of us want to reach to the top, to be enlightened, to be beautiful, to do, to understand everything. You know, to be pure totally, and uh, at the same time the strongest, whatever. Okay, right. and uh, and uh, but what happens? You, the way is very complicated. There are many rocks and you know canyons and waters and storms on the way, and problems, personal things. You know, it's all so many obstacles. You know, then you need you need the guidance. You need a teacher. You need somebody that show you the way. That that even if you started, you find your own way after many years, and you want to climb. Still, you, uh, you, you need some advice. Or sometimes you are stuck and you're going around the mountain, going around, and you don't find, you don't know how to, to go on. And then you have to calm down, relax. We talked to you, you said about, take, do some meditation. Try to find a different, different angle, a different answer, a different way. Definitely you are not in the top. But that's why in this, in this point, since I said, no, no, it's you are saying it. Until here, he, was, he agrees with right. me. Said, but sometimes you reach to a point, it can be you, it can be me, it can be another person, that you feel that you are in the top. You are looking, you reach to a high level, and you go and look down, you say, wow, I did so much. I, I understand so much. I can do much better than all my disciples or my friends or whatever. I'm at the top. I must be at the top. I must be at the top, but you don't look up. You are so far from the top. You are so far. But also I said it in a in trying to be, you know, not to you know, scold them or tell them anything. You know, if you feel that it's good for you, that is good for you. It's your way. It's fine too. Not everyone is reaching to the top. Probably very few in generation or nobody. So if you reach to a certain high level and you feel good there and you don't want to search anymore, you feel they're good and that's the place you want to be, that's fine too. We are human beings still. <laughs> we are not gods. We want to be, we believe, some believe that part of God is in Israel like that, but still we are not. So to reach to the top is maybe is maybe God or something very close to God. Mm -hmm. So 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 he said when you say something like that you are insulting other people. They think they are in the top. They are not in the top. I said, Sensei, I will write very clear. It's me saying it. Right. <laughs> That's it. So so when when I told them, listen, you know, you are Gojuri Shit or you what or you go Kyokushi, Shotokan. Shotokan, there are like five different kinds of Shotokan, even in Israel, and right. everyone has his own teacher. I said, listen, guys, 
you are searching also. Some people want to climb to the mountain of competition. It's, it's, a, it's a mountain though. There is a mountain. You like this? It's your mountain. Go and do it, you know. Well, until what age you can do it, whatever. But it's still fine. If you, that's your target, do it. Do it the best way, you know. But if you want to continue, then you have to sometimes going on this mountain disturb you. For me, it, it was an obstacle because I went to many competitions because there was no one, no one, no others in, in the 1970s, the beginning of the 80s. Then there was the Maccabiah games and the international events, etc. So we were the people that did it. And actually it disturbed my progress because I wanted to make a point. But you know, you know, I want to, it, to win the, yeah. it wasn't the right mountain for you. No, I think it was good for me because At I time. did when I was young at that time. Right. So when I understood, when I faced Sensei Oshima and it didn't work, I said, oh, what's going on? I beat everyone. I won against the, the, the world champion from South Africa. I beat him three to one very easily. Everyone was shocked. They didn't know who are the Israelis, you know? So I was a, then I thought, I, I, well, I, I can do, but when I face Sensei or uh, even Daniel Shemla or anything, sure. I felt more small and I said, something is wrong with me. <laughs> what is that? So I have to find a way. So I, but it helped me. In certain way, it helped. It brought you some confidence. You can do that. <laughs> if I can do that, I don't have to prove anymore. That's it. Right. I prove it to myself so I can search. Makes, makes total sense. So do you remember your very first karate class? Yeah, well, that was, well, it's not a secret anymore, but uh, you know, at that, that time it was very, very, very secret. When I finished the army, I was recruited to be you know, air marshal, but in order to be air marshal, there were like choosing like 30 or 40 out of 1,000 that were warriors before. Right. I mean, they wanted, the best in the, not the best, the people that they can trust, that they can save their own themselves in the airplane, you know, what? And so, and then after out of 30 or 40 in the class, maybe 10 or 15 finished the, the course. So that was a very, very, very tough. And the teacher there, was the, the martial art teacher, the, not, not the, the shooting, was Mary Ael, that he was a student of Oshima Sensei. Of oh, was Mary Ael, okay. Yeah. He came. He came back on the uh, on the uh, uh, in '69, and he started to teach in Tel Aviv. Actually, opened the organization in 1970. But what happened? That I didn't know that I was doing karate at all. So 1971, beginning of 1971. Yeah. I, no. 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 Middle of 70. No. October 79. I came to the Hebrew University to study mathematics, physics, and I saw people in one of the halls doing something. I approached. There was one guy. I'm telling you the name because at that time I didn't know. His name is Meir Ganor. He yeah, was, sure. from, of course. Yeah, yeah. He was from Washington State. He came, not from Washington. So, so Meir Ganor and Mary Ahel, they're really the ones that brought Shotokan to Israel. No, no, no. Meir Ganor didn't bring brought Shotokan. I thought he, May, they, he brought another style. Okay. He joined Mary no, and then he came to Shotokan. Yeah. Okay, he, he did something, uh, something connected, something similar, like application of Shotokan. But was very nice. He was very relaxed. And uh, But then I asked him, what is this? And he said, oh, this is karate. I said, oh, karate. We only know Patrick Kim. We knew judo, but we didn't know. We didn't know karate. So I told him, does I get the points? You know, every first year you have to make a class of sport in order to pass. He said, yeah, yeah. If you register every day, Monday and Thursday and uh, Sunday and, and, and Wednesday is in the other campus. So I said, okay. I went to the sport and there was no karate gi. It was only judo gi. So I bought a judo gi. And I joined the first class, the next way, well, next class. And after the class, he came to me and said, how many years you are practicing? So I told him, what do you mean? This is my first karate class. He said, like he said, he was he like with a kippah, with a young yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, like it's cheat outside. He was like right. a hippie, hippie karate guy. He was a very funny guy. Look, he was PhD in philosophy, wasn't he? He came already like that. So he was teaching in a very, very unique, I learned a lot from him. A very, very unique way. And, uh, and uh, 
And I looked at him and, I, and then I, I it, something felt, you know, like, a, oh, I understood. Oh, I was practicing five hours a day, six hours a day with Mary Hale for a few months. It, it, and then I practiced by myself in order to keep. That was probably karate. He didn't say karate. It was like a self-defense, Israeli self-defense or whatever. Right. Then I said, yeah, you know, I could not tell him. Because even my parents didn't know. Nobody knew what I was doing. So I told him, listen, I, I was in the army. I was in the end as a teacher was teaching me. He said, who is your teacher? I said, Mary Ann. He said, oh, this is my teacher. Wow. <laughs> then we understood. Okay, so that's... that's so. But yeah. then, yeah. But then from the first day of karate practice, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Between five to seven hours, I practice every day for almost 20 years. That's, that's I was, how crazy I was into it. I studied, mat- you know, to study mathematics, physics is very hard. And then after they get married and there is wars and there is activity and the business, still I was practicing like crazy, five, six hours. I was, and every time I found something, every time I stuck and every, but, uh, 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 I, I, it become the way of my life, actually. It in, influenced every part of my life. Because of that, I become ambassador. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> opened, I'm sure it opened a lot of doors. So do you remember the first time you met Mr. Oshima? Yeah, of course. Actually, the, the also, this is a very amazing story about him. Because in 1973, he was supposed to come the first time to make a special, first special training. And we were already running every day, kilometers barefoot, you know. They told us it's like that, like that. So we were crazy practicing. You know, we were not a big group, but we were practicing very hard. And then, and then October 73 was a war. And he was supposed to arrive in October from France. Then he called Mariel, he was with Daniel Shemla, he called Mariel, he told him, listen, I understand there is a problem, there is a war. He told him, yes, sense, there is a war, students are not here, they are in the front. Everyone was called to the front. And then, then, then he said, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> and then when he landed, it was, he was the only foreigner because the airport was dark and the, the, the Syrians attacked us from the south, no, and the Egyptians from the south, and they succeeded, they took over. And we thought that we are going to, you know, diaspora again. It was like a very, very hard war. Thousands of people died and wounded. And uh, we could not, uh, we just only could stall them, stop the Egyptian in the middle of Sinai and stop the, the Syrians in the middle, almost at the end of the Ramat and the Golan Heights. But, uh, uh, but only they were doing it. We, we, we Egyptians, they were Russians. Real Russians, even in the aeroplanes, they were really fighters, Russian fighters, not just advisors. So they have like regiment or from other countries, but it mainly was Egypt, Syria and Egypt. And we were in the front, but Oshim Masensi came. So he said, listen, he told Mary, yeah, listen, I want to go to the front to teach maybe. He told him, no, no, he said, you cannot go. And you're teaching, it's bombs and artillery, tanks. And what, what would you teach? Nobody is, everyone is under the shelter of wielding and fighting. It's not, it's not, a, there is no place to practice. It's, you don't, it's, so yeah, yeah, I was in a war time. But anyway, there were like uh, 15 or 20 people that, still were not recruited, maybe young or old. Or, and then uh, and then he did some practice and, and he had to go back. So there was no special training. I didn't meet him. So the next year, 2000, uh, 1974, he made a, a practice, a, a not special training, but a technical practice in Paris. And three of us decided to go there. But I was, I just got married. In September. So I took my wife to the honeymoon. <laughs> Beautiful. Did she know that that uh, that you were going to go to practice? Actually, when she met me, she knew that's a crazy guy mm-hmm. like that. So so before we go on, I, w- I want to set the context for Shotokan Karate, and Mr. Oshima, because a lot of viewers don't know who they are. So your teacher and mine, Mr. Oshima, is one of the few truly great masters in the world. Yes. Uh, recognized as such by, I think, all serious martial arts organizations, came over to the United States in 1955 from Japan. 
He was a direct student of Mr. Fun Master Funakoshi, who was really the father of modern karate. And then in the 60s, he came to the United States. He started a nonprofit organization and teaches, you know, Shotokan karate all over the world, hundreds of dojos. And it's a very high level description. And there are many, of course, unique aspects to Mr. Oshima, to the black belts, the organization. Can you just elaborate a little bit on what makes Shotokan unique yeah. in the martial arts world? Well, just to so give people an idea. And yeah, I should add that I should add one more thing that you are the uh, author of Mr. Oshima's uh, biography, published in 2015. Phenomenal book. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So go 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 ahead, please. Yeah, well, it took me seven years to write it, you know, because I <laughs> every time I write, he, he told me, no, no, I didn't say that. I said, Sensei, I have it everything in tape. <laughs> you say <stated>. it. <laughs> if you don't want me to write it, that's another question. Let's argue. He wanted a very, but I wanted a more juicy book, you know, something we want to know about his life and his love, his, his fears, etc., etc. And finally, I succeeded. You know, I didn't write everything. I could write another book. I have a, a lot of material. But he, I, I had to keep his, his, you know, my word. And of course, he approved everything that is written in the book, he approved. But uh, well, and also I was, I think I wrote it in the book, but I was asked by many Japanese teachers because you know what happened? Because I, when I came as ambassador, I was getting invitations to any kind of martial art, Kendo and Yaido and Jiu Jitsu and Judo and uh, Aikido. Most of the embassies are getting, but I was the only ambassador that was going. And many times the flag of Israel was there and they say the anthem of Israel and they, many times they asked me to make a demonstration. Sometimes even I joined some competition, you know, I, I didn't, I, I don't have any mental blocks. I joined everything. I did my job. I used it. As, but after that, I became very friendly with many of the masters there because they saw that I respect them. I don't show any, yes, I told you like it. Well, I respect what you do. It doesn't matter. I do it a different way, but I respect what you do. And they asked me a few times, few teachers, few, few very serious, like Kanazawa sensei or others, they asked me, can you explain to us how come Oshima sensei have very high level intellectual people in his organization and why not so many people are leaving the organization, most are staying, you know, all the organization are split. After certain times, they split, they split, they split, they split, but they said their teacher was split, so they said, I can split too, so they split. Of course, there are people that split in every organization, but I told them, I think, it's not, it's not for sure, but I think that there are few reasons. One of them is a leader must give a self-example. If a leader makes a self-example, you follow him because he does not just talk. Right. He's doing it. So Sensei Oshima was joining the special training everywhere, running after shouting, talking, pushing, going from one country to another. Then he, when he was doing a kata or he was doing a kumite, he was doing it with us. And he, he was doing and they were saying, sir, two second, this is a, a first example. Second, he respected his seniors. He all the time said, listen, I respect this, I respect this. There was no misrespect. And he always quoted, you know, the, the teachers. He, the, he said like this, I learned from this like that, like a Jewish. That's why many Jewish people, I think, like the way of Sensei Hiroshima. Because it's like a Judaism, in, in a way. You have to respect, you have to say the, the source that gave you. If, you. if you do that, you can bring the Messiah earlier. That's what we say. If you quote the right person, you don't say, "I I found out. I I know. I did." <laughs> right, right. You're giving you're giving you're giving credit to someone else. Credit, yes. Right. So so first is was a first uh, uh, personal example. Second, he was respecting the seniors and the way that he started. He didn't change. He said, "Listen, I understand some things. If I change, I'll tell you what I changed. My what my understanding. I will tell you this is a different from what. You want to follow? Okay. You don't. It's okay. But the, the main road was the road of his seniors. Third, he insisted that the special training will be the core 
and most important part of our practice. He said, this special training, even if it's done only once a year or twice a year, it must affect your entire practice because in this special training, it's not a technical. Of course, some people making some technical practicing, but the idea of this, the special training is that you are facing your weaknesses, that you are facing your problem, that you want to strengthen your mentality and your spirit, not physical, not body, because the idea is to go beyond the power. If you are very good in, I'll give you another example. He said, you have to run very fast to us in the first special training in 1974. When he came in 74, he, yeah, he came in 1975, I think. After one year, when we came to Paris, 74, he came 75. Then he said, okay, when we start, we were 43 people. He said, when we start, you have to run, you're right, there are like 30 minutes, we are running 30 minutes or 40 minutes, doesn't matter. But there is like five, or I don't know, come kilometers, you go there and come back. It was on asphalt on the, on the road right. in the Hebrew University. He said, okay, then the one that arrived to the gym continue to run until, until, until the last one, etc. You know that. Right. But then when he said, Ajime, 43 people started to run like crazy because... We understood what he said, as he said. He said, no, you have to do it best. In the running, it doesn't matter. So if somebody know is a good runner, it doesn't matter. He must do beyond his running. Right. right. So running, you get to the wall, or you still continue, continue, even the others. <laughs> you run more there's, than that. There's no, there's no end. There is no end. And then every movement you have to do from the beginning. So how many? How many? You can do 100 movement. Okay, sprint. But... 1,000, 1,300 or 200, depends on the key. And it's like, it's like impossible, but it's impossible because you are all the time using the reserve, the reserve, the autonomic reserve of your muscles. Of your, and then you, you find your limit is getting high, higher and higher every year. Oh, oh last year I did keep it actually like that. This year I can, maybe I can go a little bit lower, maybe. I'm cheating myself, cheating, looking at the other. So doing together, no, doing it by yourself is very difficult. So the gathering together, we encourage each other and, and also pushing each other. So, so let's talk a little bit about special training because once again, people may not understand that. So that's a very unique concept of Shotokan Karate special training, which in short is a lot of karate in a very short period of time. Sounds very simple, but yeah. very intense, very little sleep within each practice. Ideally, you're pushing yourself to the point of exhaustion. Then you do it again a few hours later and a few hours later. And it takes place over three days, seven days, depending on the, the season. And once you commit to attending, you can't leave. You can leave, but if you leave, you can't come back. Yeah. So uh, you're no longer welcome to practice the Shotokan anymore. And I, you know, um, so and anything you, and then the very first special training, I, I believe, well, one of the ones that we know about were in Japan in Sato Island when Mr. Oshima was a white belt. And yeah. those were probably even more brutal than, than what I've experienced, I'm sure. Uh, just a funny quote from Mr. Oshima. He says, at my very first special training, I thought everyone was crazy. And I thought I was the only normal guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I was shocked. And what's funny about that is that's what I thought. My first special training I said, you know, cause he'd have people stand up. How many, Oh, I've been to 20 special trainings. I've been to 10. I've been 15. I've been to 40, whatever. And I'm thinking like, these guys are, I was a white belt. I said, these guys are crazy. Yeah. You know, I had the same exact thought. So, so what was your very first special training like? You know, I'll tell you something. I, well, we, we all, many of the 43 people that were there, they were fighting unit, most of them, I think. <laughs> so they understood the hardness. They understood. Sensei told us only a few years later, like 10 years later or something like that, he told us, you know, I was shocked. <laughs> when I saw you guys, the first special training, it was like 10 special training of other countries. It was, I didn't understand what I'm seeing. I said, what you, what you, how come they understand what I'm talking? The mentality. Yeah, the mentality, we understood that you go all the way, you go all the way. You go to the death, you go to the death. We understand what you... You understand to. survival and yeah. fighting for survival. So so, so, so that's the third thing. As I mentioned, is self-example 
and the, and the respecting of the seniors and the uh, insisting that the special training is the core practice. So from that you, it kind of affect or influence or enlighten the daily practice because in the, in the daily practice, when you do like this, you remember, oh, I can do much more. So yeah. now I know my limits. You know? Right, so when those seniors asked you about that, I, the, what came to my mind were a few things. One is a lot of the, the, the dojos here in the United States were started at universities. So you're already starting, you're not opening up a storefront and saying, hey, I'm going to teach karate. You're at universities where there's uh, educated students, highly educated students. As you know, a lot of people are physicists and PhDs and that kind of thing. So I think you're also starting with that kind of, Mr. Oshima taught, you know, at, Cal State, at Caltech, all these wonderful high-level places, Harvard, MIT, they all had, still do, dojos. So I think that that's part of it. But I think the other part is Mr. Oshima is really not your average uh, person. You know, I'll tell you, when I, I thought, we thought, or maybe you thought, you thought the same, that, oh, he's a Japanese. You know, Mariel was saying all the time, you know, his ankle is very flexible. Oh, all the te <laughs> these techniques are built for Japanese people. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> got, the arms are a little bit longer and this and that, you know, you make up all this yeah. crap in your yeah. mind. But, yeah. but because he is so, I don't like to use the word special, um, I don't, uh, uh, but let's call it free of mental blocks. We can call it free, liberated, whatever words we want to use, enlightened. People see that and they sense that. And, yeah. and I'm going to think about 15 times before I go and split off because I know I'm, you know, if he's here and I'm here, what am I going to go to do? You know, I have so much, I, there's so little that I know. So where am I going to go split off to? When, when I came to Japan the first time, it was 86, there was a group from United States and from Canada and from Israel. And uh, at that time, I understood that not all the Japanese are like Oshima Sensei. Right. <laughs> oh, I thought, they cannot do this, they cannot do this. He is very unique in, in Japan as well. And they respect him. Of as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, I think that uh, Oshima Sensei always said that uh, when he came to the karate, I was almost 17 or 18 years old, he already did like 10 special training of a kendo and right. judo, but it was different. And he was doing was martial arts. Out. His father had him doing martial arts when he was three years old. Yeah, they had the dojo in the and, house. And that, exactly. So, so they practiced soon. I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses, but he had this wonderful opportunity, not just the culture, but the family and all that to really, the same way that Israelis that have been to the army, they have that culture. So they're starting at that level then, you know, as opposed to, you know, your average American doesn't know a lot of hardship. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll tell you the, Oshima Sensei always says that uh, he continued to practice. It means, you know, I, I because I, I spend a lot of time and I'm spending a lot of time in Japan, I know the culture. Most of the people after university, they don't stop practicing. If they, they come to the Yokai Saturday, they come once in a month or something right. like that. Oh, that, hello, hello, hello. And, um, some go to professional, but there are very few. And then they go to JKA or whatever, to some big organization making a salary or something like a business. But there are very few of them. So most of the people are not, even his seniors didn't develop. Like I tell you something, when I interviewed Watanabe Sensei, he mm -hmm. was 10 years older than Oshima Sensei. And he was one of the senpai, one of the seniors that was teaching in Waseda and Oshima Sensei, when he met him, he was a very top eye about, so, you know. And when I asked him, uh, okay, are you the, one of the teachers of Oshima Sensei? He said, no. I'm not his teacher. I, I was a senior there, but his teacher was Master Funakoshi. Right. And, and because uh, uh, Jiko, Jiko, okay, yeah, the son of Master Funakoshi died in 1945. Right. So Sensei didn't meet him, but Watanabe Sensei practiced with Jiko, not with, with uh, Funakoshi, Master Funakoshi. Oh, and, and then he asked me, Okay, he showed me something. We talked to we, we are karate people, so even we talk, we start we start to do some movements, etc. So he asked me, okay, you think this way or this way? So I said, I don't want to insult Jiko, but this is not <laughs> the right way. So he said, Yeah, you are right. 
because Master Funoko, uh, Master Oshima continued to practice and continue to learn from others and all the time checking when to Okinawa, etc. And also practice, daily practice. And you know, in 1976, I wrote it in the book, 1976, and uh, not, not 2006, there was the 50th anniversary of right. uh, America Shotokan. Right. Then we had the practice of the grass and then Oshima Sensei stopped the practice and he gave the lecture at that time instead of the evening. And he said, listen, I'm practicing since I was three years old, and now already 73 years I'm practicing. And every time I found out something new, I was teaching you. I didn't want to keep it to myself. But what I found out after a few years, that what I found out already was found out before. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, he said nothing, nothing new under this uh, world. And I told in the book I wrote also say that you, what you found, that you, what you found is already founded before was was known before. That was already written by Solomon, King Solomon, in the book of Kohelet. He said everything that was in the past it's coming back. There is I no. I, I think the quote is "Ein Chadash Tachat Hashem" from Ecclesiastes. There's nothing yeah. new under the sun. I just want to be precise here. Yeah, yeah, good, great, great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I told him, Sensei, what do you mean? You know, what you said is like Solomon. It's a great, even your invention, your, like you think, oh, I found out that everything that I found, it was already there. Only the that was written 3,000 years ago. So, but you found it. But the beauty is that you find it you find it again. And then you see, oh, I found a very beautiful thing. So I don't keep it to myself. I teach it to my students because the next day maybe it will disappear or I don't practice it or something like that. So you want to pass it, pass it that it will be developed or be known by, by, by your student. So, so I think this, this way of even like presenting humbleness, you know, not just being humble, but presenting our listen, it's not me. Of course, I found it. Oh, I'm very happy that I found it. But somebody else found it before. Yeah, and, and, and he said many times, uh, you go and investigate. Yeah. You go yeah. and do it 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 times. And then you come back and you tell me, maybe you learned something I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, the humility is, is, uh, is impeccable. And, uh, and the skill level is also impeccable and the energy is just so beautiful so it's like who's gonna go and start their own thing you know you got to be crazy you got to have to poor judgment i think so i think that's yeah, when, the, yeah when i was writing the book uh, in the second year or something it was about 10 years ago after i was ambassador i think the first year after i found ambassador i called him i said since less sensei i think i will i'm going to every time people tell me you are quoting sessions you are quoting what maybe i will make a conversation you know like the, like we are doing and then i will write questions and answers but he said okay so i told him i'm coming for two weeks he said two weeks i said okay discount one week <laughs> then i came but after the second day i told him no no this is this is a stupid idea why should i quote my questions this doesn't make any sense i will write a book about you is it okay yeah, he said, yeah, you are a writer already. You write a book. But then the second year or third year, I don't remember, maybe 2010 or something like that. I, he came in, he had a backache, you know, since he had four right. So I told him, since I can cure your backache because I had. And he said, yeah, yeah, I know you can cure. I can cure too. He said, what's that? I, th I told him, since I have a system. He said, what do you mean system? <laughs> I created the system. A method. And then I showed him like 50, 30 minutes. He didn't say anything. The next day he came and there was Judy there, came Judy is his companions. I said, Judy, write down. Ellie, show me again. So I showed him for three hours. We didn't go to dinner. We ate in the house. I said, I showed him for. He asked me, Ellie, I know you more than 40 years. Well, well, how did you come with these ideas? I told him, oh, 60% is from you which was totally true. I 
gathered from everything, from, uh, from Shiatsu and yoga and Alexander and my practice of uh, sport, my teachers, my, but mainly from him, from what I practice in, 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 in karate and understanding of directions and using all, many, many sense of breathing, etc. So I said, you should get a Nobel Prize for that. I told him, no sense. There is no invention. <laughs> it's just a collective of things, but targeting to heal a certain joint or a certain infection. So it's a method already. I wrote a book about it. It will, it will come as a book later. Good, beautiful. That's beautiful. Wow. Very, very exciting. And he, he th that's good because he can see that what he taught you is now coming back, that you have taken it seriously, you reformulated it, you add a little spice here, a little spice there from other areas. And just like you said, in some sense, it's beautiful, it's new, it's inventive, it's creative. In other sense, it's, hey, I got it from you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so uh, I'm gonna change gears a little bit. Before we do, can I ask you to shift your camera down a little bit? Because right now I can only see, your, yeah, perfect. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so for many of us, there are very few opportunities in life to use karate, to have to defend ourselves physically. Uh, and of course, uh, there's a story, so whenever a story surfaces about an experience where a Shotokan black belt uses karate in real time, it kind of knew, the news spreads fast in the Shotokan community, in the SKA Shotokan community. So, uh, so speaking with you is, now is an opportunity to find out what happened with you in an incident in 1984 in Jerusalem, so we can separate fact from fiction. I'll just set the context and then you'll, of course, uh, give, give us whatever details you can. Three terrorists came from Lebanon to Jerusalem. They injured more than 50 people. One person died. Uh, downturn, downtown was, chaos was going on, as we can all imagine. You ran down from your office on the second floor. I think you were an insurance agent. And then I'll, I'll let you finish the story. Yeah, when there was, I had a client in front of me and I heard shooting and bombs. And I was thinking, oh, it's a Purim, like a Purim carnival. Some people shooting, you know, we know that. But I said, no, no, it's one, two months after, one month. No, it's not possible. So I turned around and I saw somebody is running in the street with the hand up and the bag inside. So I said, oh, terrorist. And at that time, it was, I think it was Monday because I was teaching Monday and Thursday. And, they, and I remember I ran to the door. I left the client and my secretary just ran to the door to go down. And then I said, oh, I brought my bag. So maybe I have, because I'm coming very late at night, I go to Arab, Arab villages, maybe I brought my gun. So I went to the, the gi, the karate, and then there was a pistol. I pulled the pistol and I started to run down. Of course, I was running down, people going up. And then somebody, I, I one, one friend of friends in the office next by, and he was a major in the army. I told him, what's going on? He said, just running down. I didn't wait. He said, shooting. There are terrorists shooting down. So, but he knew me. He was, not, he was not surprised that I was going down. Anyway, I went out and I saw somebody with a, a, a pistol shouting, terrorists, terrorists. So I, he was shouting. It was an Israeli guy. So I looked around. I saw one guy on the floor in the middle of the street, in the middle of the road, between the, you know, in the middle of the road. So I went to the, fir to the first uh, store next to, to, to my entrance and I told them, please call the police. But I saw somebody is already calling the police. It, I'm telling you, it's like one minute, two minutes going down. The shooting, go down, that's text. But in one minute, shooting, throwing bombs and crowded people, 50 people, it's like a, a miracle, you know? It's a King George Street, King George Street and Jaffa Street. Major, Jeez, major thoroughfare. Yeah. Major. Then, when I turned around, this guy that was on the floor stood up with a grenade in his left hand. And I immediately turned and I shot him. Immediately shot. It was like 10 meters or something like that. I don't know if I succeeded or not. But he said something. And, but I tried to shoot another shot, but it stopped. So I, I started to run towards him, but he ran away. And then, and after him, there was a bus. He was attached to a bus. So he went around the bus, probably wanted to go into the bus because the bus was full of people, like 50 people or something like this, standing, you know? 
But I was running so fast, probably jumping over the fence that is between the road and the, and the side sidewalk. And the, but my feeling was that I'm in a slow motion. <laughs> my feeling was that I'm like this. Shh. But I ran probably very, very fast because I closed the distance between him and I fixed my, my shooting and I shot against once. I shot, so he turned back. He was next to the door of the bus. Door was open. I didn't know. I didn't know what's going on. You don't know. You're just shooting. And then he turned to me. I don't know if I hit him or not hit him, but he turned and he said something, showing me his grenade, something. But I was continuing. So I, my, my gun stopped again. What's the problem with this gun? <laughs> but that's heaven wanted that it will stop, that I would do some karate. So I ran to him and I hit him like a, 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 a Tetsui or Gedan Barai because it was in the running. I don't know why I didn't do a Oizuki. Me, Miki, my friend said, why did you kick him? I said, Miki, why are you asking me these stupid questions? I don't know why I didn't kick him. I was running like crazy and I hit him with this. This was the natural movement with the, with the hand and the fist. Yeah. He fell, but he didn't fall backwards. It means when we teach in karate, if the punch is good, the, the person will fall forward. It will not fall backward because you don't shoot, push him. You right. just cut Hit him. Then he's collapsed. And he so drops, he collapsed. And he drops, yeah. And he drops on me. He collapsed on me. So all his blood was on me. And his grenade fell down. In our side of sidewalk, there was no one. All the people were in the other side where I came from my office. <laughs> so so when I looked, there was no one there. So I and then pack. I was wounded by a grenade in some of the walls or something. So I know exactly I throw grenades, I know how it works. And he was down. And it was far from the bus, not far, but it was next to the wheel of the bus. So in my mind, I if, if I would think that if I put him on the grenade, it would be better, I would do it, but it was safe. But this is my instinct as a warrior of a lot of experience. So I ran around the bus and I told people, go down, fall down, it's a grenade, go away, fall down. So anyway, the grenade exploded probably killed him. I don't think my punch killed him, but maybe, I don't know. His hand was, from the pictures, you see that his hand, left hand was gone because of the grenade. And, uh, and uh, I was wounded by one sharpener that came under the bus or something to, to my side. And uh, then I already, I fixed my gun because people told me, oh, there are another two. One is running to Agrippa Street and the other one was going to Jaffa Street. So I said, where is the Agrippa? But I started to run, but then I saw people putting guns. People came out of the offices or came, yeah, because uh, people, soldiers or something like that, they have uh, there. So I said, if I start to run, they will shoot me. So I said, I started to talk and to walk. Then a police came car and they, they knew me because my wife was working in the police center. She was investigator of, uh, of drugs and kids, etc. And then she called my secretary and she said, there are shooting. Where is Ellie? She said, down. She said, I knew. <laughs> That's, so anyway, uh, they caught the, the police caught him next to Machane Yuda, next to the market with a full of granite. Oh God. Package of granite. And the second one, Run away with his car to to Bethlehem, and the police uh, police border caught him. So they both of them were captured. They ran away because their leader, it was their leader, he died. I killed him. So they ran away, and then and then uh, uh, um, they were released in the Jibril uh, deal with to release him. Whatever doesn't matter. But when I came to, then the police asked me, can you, can you come to testify? I said, yeah. So I went with them to the police headquarters, like it's a five minute, two minutes drive or something. It's a center in Migrasha Rusim, in the very close. And my wife came also, they told her, your husband is giving testify. And then when I was saying, she said, you are bleeding, Ellie. I said, so nothing, it's nothing. It's just a uh, sharp nail. I don't feel anything. It's in the muscle somewhere. I don't know. She said, no, but I said, okay, calm down. I'm giving, I'm finishing my testimony. Then I go to the, <laughs> then I went to the hospital, the Kurholim. That was the same hospital that I was born. Oh. It, it's one minute from my office, actually. It's in Strauss Street. It's in, it's a continuous of King George Street 
to, to one minute, in one minute walking. It's, but that's the, office, that's the place that I was born. So only two times in my life I was in hospital, when I was born and when I was wounded. Then, then all the media came and everyone, and then for this, and Asher Khan, you know, one of the now goddess of Israel, he brought to me two shurikans, shurikans, he told me, Ali, somebody will try to kill you. <laughs> Next time. Next time. You will have some weapon. You know? So, so I, you know, one of the questions a lot of karate students, I think, would ask immediately is, you know, what was the, you know, what was the attack? What was the, what was the technique? Had used was, so the, so was it a rakin was it was no, it no, no. was a tetsui from tetsui. like get them by tetsui no no get them by tetsui okay it's from from here like and you jumped at and you probably jumped at him as well yeah yeah it was like yeah, running no 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 I was running, running like you're crazy. running okay think think you are in a sprint you right. don't think about about stopping you cannot stay you run to bam this right. way and then you fell down that's it right. finish was the so, one blow that's it. So in 1984, the New York Times had an article about the attack and they quoted you. So this is from the New York Times, quote, I ran behind the bus and he turned toward me. We ran toward each other and I hit him on the head and the grenade he was holding fell and I shouted grenade and ran. I hit on the other side of the bus, but apparently that wasn't enough because I was hit by shrapnel. As for the terrorist, he didn't shout anything. It looked like he was in a trance as if he didn't care about bullets or anything. So that's from the New York Times. That was David Shipler. Anyone who knows New York Times knows David Shipler, very famous columnist from the New York Times. So can, can you describe what it was like to face someone with a grenade after your gun didn't work? Or were you just, I, this is how I'm trained. I just go. There's no thinking, strategizing. I was trained to do this. I did this. I had to eliminate him. That's right. He was going to injure or kill other people, and I knew I can do it. It was right. like a subconscious action, nothing of thinking. I was trained to do it. It's like a, when people ask me, I said, "Lay, hey, he's stupid that he came next to, next to my office. They didn't know, that's all. <laughs> they, they made a mistake, a strategic mistake. Yeah. You know, that's very, very sad, very sad this story, but this is a very Jewish story. They didn't know if to make me a surgery or not, or there is a committee, and then they sent me to Adassa to make an X-ray. And then an old lady was sitting next to me, waiting for the X-ray, and then she said, oh, you are the hero, I saw you. I said, no, 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 not hero, no, mom, it's okay. You know, God brought him here, and then, you know, to me. And then she did like this, with the hand. Yeah. Oh. She showed me the number of the Auschwitz, or the, any kind of Holocaust. Well, what is this? I said, mom, I hugged her. I said, mom, I don't understand many things. I'm very sorry that I said, she, she hugged me back. She said, no, no, forget about it. You are a hero. You are my hero. That doesn't matter. So this you see, but when I say God, it's like, where, where, where is God? Where, where was he in the Holocaust? You know, so very, for me, that's, I never forget this moment. It affected my life. And she was not by, by coincidence there. So, there is something that we cannot explain. The Holocaust is nothing no, we cannot explain. Yeah, it's very, very, very inspiring. That last bit about you sitting with a Holocaust survivor kind of put things in perspective for you. Yeah, yeah that changed change all this perspective of my life about God and about, about Judaism, about everything. I, 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 it's not that it stopped me believing in God. But it's changed something. You yeah, know, like, it, shif it shifted like, you. Like, yeah, yeah, like if you analyze, you said, okay, okay, I believe God is deciding about everything and he's like making, okay, there is evil and uh, good and then evil against good and something. Oh, okay, you can get. But if God is the one that is, is planning everything, what was the, the Nazis were his messengers? What the hell is going here? So I cannot accept it, you know? So I, I, I said, okay, there are things that we cannot explain because I felt God or I had experience with God in the very other things, which was the good things. So I, I, cannot, I cannot say, you know, I know, I know anything. I just know that he, he exists and I don't try to understand what is going and what is the reason because- Right. Yeah. So- What's interesting is um, I have a few more questions for you, but one of my last questions 
which I was debating whether or not to ask, was, um, do you believe in God? Yeah. That was that, That's going to come up in about 15 minutes, but now yeah. I don't have to ask it. And I said, you know, I don't know if I want to ask Ellie that. I don't want to put him on the spot and, you know, but there it is. It just, it just came out. And, and I think because you're such a, um, you know, very intellectual, it's also, you know, we're trying to analyze and, and logistically and figure out there is a God, there can be a God. Well, if he did this, then it's like, but I don't think that kind of uh, understanding can be um, understood intellectually. I think, I think that, uh, you know, people try to give logics to many things. Like, for example, if there was no Holocaust, there was no the state of Israel. And they said, no, what do you mean? We had to pay debt in order to get that. That's stupid thing for me. It's not connected to anything. So if I want to, to explain it in evil and good, and I said, listen, there is no... You know, in, in the Bible, you see, okay, if Jewish people did like this, like this, and God punished them, said, but I'm I, I'm not Moses. <laughs> I don't speak with God daily, and I don't know what is the reason. So what is the old picture in thousands of years or million years? I have no idea. So if I feel God, and I I, I feel him, and I, believe, I, I pray to God every day. And, but there was, it was not always like that. There was ups and downs many times in the life, especially in very active life like I did. But I'll, I don't know if it's God or anything, but I, I'll give you an example. I give you an example of things that I know that there is pre-planning. Who is planning? In 1982, 80, 82, I decided, there was a war, in Lebanon war. I decided that if I am coming out of this war, I will uh, I will sell everything and I will go into doing karate, meditating, writing books, uh, doing food for, making food for my daughters and uh, that's uh, living a different life. And, and then after, after the terror action, actually I sold my business. And I went into like pension, early pension. I had enough money. I said I will write books. And uh, and uh, and then that's also connected to Sensei Oshima. I said, what I will write of? So there, some person told me, okay, you write your your life story, but I am only. 34, 35 years old, what I write my life story, this is ridiculous, even though I had this and this and this. But I said, okay, Oshima Sensei once told us, we, we, when we were talking about telepathy, he said, oh, I heard, not for sure, but I heard the story that in the Himalaya mountains, there are people that are practicing telepathy and their seniority is decided by their level. But I don't know in the mountains. I never heard, but I don't go to India because there are so many things I say, you, you lost the way, you lose the way there. Anyway, I thought, okay, that's a good story. I, was, I will create an imaginary story. So I opened the atlas, the, you know, the, the books. At that time, we didn't have internet. And I look at the Himalaya mountain, of course, uh, China and Nepal, and then I saw two small countries, Sikkim and Bhutan. Sikkim is part of India, but it looks like another country. Mm -hmm. I said, Sikkim are, I heard in the news, they are fighting with the Indians. At that time, we didn't know so much. But, but Bhutan, nobody knows what it is. Bhutan. Okay, I'll write a story about Bhutan. And then I created the imaginary story about a person, maybe he's like a... A anthropologist that is searching about people and he's making uh, articles for the National Geographic or for others and search. And, but what is unique uniqueness was that he always arrived to places just before something happened. <laughs> he had this sense. So then in this search, he heard from some monk, Buddhist monk, his friend that become a Buddhist monk, that there is this community. So he went to look for them. I will not tell all the story. Story is that his girlfriend, he disappeared. And the only one that knew that he is going to search for it is because he wanted to keep their secret. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to explore. He wanted to be there. So if right. you want to be there, you want to keep their secret. Finally, she arranged a delegation because one, one of his 
per people from the from the special special you know uh, people in the Tibet Tibetan people he came back but he was like totally crazy and the, all the delegation disappeared and there was storms etc etc nobody but he when he left him was still alive so they he, she created a delegation in the story of the delegation there is a special delegation these delegations are all his friends of uh, of uh, the guy that disappeared mm-hmm. And in the story, they find him. In the, and she stays with him in the community. They keep the secret. And I stopped the story in 85 because I didn't have enough information about Bhutan. I, I didn't want to be not, uh, not you know, reliable or no, not to write names, right. etc. But I, one of my karate students gave me a National Geographic from the 1970s. So I knew many things, but I didn't know more than that. So I stopped. I wrote about 170 pages. It was taped. Somebody taped it in Hebrew. <laughs> then, then one of my students is a publisher. Why I'm telling you? Because nobody, people don't believe because it doesn't make sense, the story. One of my students was Jon Feder. Jon Feder was a publisher of the, the Idiota Chronot, the biggest publisher, mm-hmm. Keter at that time, the biggest publisher of Israel. So I told sure. him, Jon, he was a black belt. Can you read my stupid, you know, tell me if I'm in the right direction. He read, after two days, he came back to me and said, it's amazing, it's amazing. Where are you going? Which direction? Telepathy, knowing the future, or just a romance? I said, I told him, I have no idea. Every time I have to write, I have to read what I wrote two days before because I don't remember. I just, in, in, I'm just writing like crazy. You know, write, write, with my handwriting. Then she taped. Then I called the book he knew before three point. That was the name because the guy that was looking, he was he knew before he was coming to press. Right. It, was not, it was not just telepathy; it's knowing the future. Mm-hmm. It's right. it's it's one step ahead. It's not just something that you you read you what you are uh, emitting. You know what you are sending. It's something else. Twelve years later, I left the book on the shelf. I could not continue. I became, I started to go into politics, deputy mayor here, and then I went to America for this, and they, in New York we met, etc. I came back and I became director general of the of the department of settlement in the Jewish agency, and but and then a friend, a son son of my friend, 24, 25 years old. He was a very special unit, but he took a vacation from the army one year and he went to the Far East. He disappeared, disappeared in Tibet. And uh, the father was looking for him twice and all, everyone helped him. The, the, the foreign ministry and the prime minister. And because it's Israel is like that. If somebody, we are, we are with each other. And, uh, everyone, they didn't find him, he disappeared, he disappeared. Then I told, I was director general, but I said, listen, if Shlomo, Shlomo was his name, he passed away a few months ago. But if Shlomo is calling, doesn't matter what happens, you give me, you pass the call. So Shlomo called me when I was dealing with the intermediate budget in June or something like that. 20 people in my room, etc. I said, okay, Shlomo, what's going on? He said, Eli, you know that I'm preparing a delegation. I gather money and I pay him. One year later, after his son was disappeared. I'm going to a delegation. And I said, yeah, I know. We are helping in money and the connection, etc." I said, no, 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 I have a problem. I said, what the problem? He said, the head of the delegation, professional guy that we recruited, he has a problem, he cannot come. We have nine people, but the 10 person that is number one is no. I said, okay, so what, what do you want me to do? He said, no, you are my commander. I ask you to be the head of the delegation. And then I said, Okay, when the delegation is coming out, he said, I didn't remember. He said, next week. I said, okay, where do you want me to go? Then he said, to Bhutan. As he said it, all my skin, mm-hmm. like, all my hair, like, Bwam! I said, Shlomo, okay, I'm going. I, let me tell my wife, tell me, tell the head of the Jewish agency, tell them that I'm going next week. In Israel, it's, like, it's understood. It's under, we have right. to help. It's understood. It's not a question. Then for one week, all the all the in my office become like a headquarters. <laughs> I'm using every connection. We make it. We went there. We found the boss. I was one month in Bhutan, so it means I wrote a book. 
10 years before it happened about somebody disappearing in the mountain of Bhutan that his friends are looking for him. And who were the delegation? The delegation was five people, that the four people was from his age, his friend, and five people that were my age and his father, of course. So it means like a real, a same delegation, like a same delegation, but the father and the mother are organizing not his lover, and it's in Bhutan. It's, in, it's like, so what I did recently, just before he died last year, when I had time in Corona, I told him, Shlomo, I have an idea. Because there were two books written about it in Hebrew. And one of them was translated. The book that father wrote, Shlomo, was translated that in, it is in Amazon, in uh, Shlomo. And, uh, and uh, I told him, Shlomo, I have an idea how to write my book. He said, why? I said, what? I told him, listen, I'm going to write the imaginary book until 170. I will write it in English, I would, but I will translate word to word. I will not change because that's all the idea. Then from there, I will tell my diary because I wrote a diary too. But I did, will not write a full book. I will write what happened, what I felt, how we did, whatever. Then I will continue my imaginary story. The real story will be with real names, and real dates and everything. The fiction book will be fiction book, no connection. And I will explain, and I will explain the story from the beginning. This is finished, I finished. I gave it to Shlomo two months before he passed away. He was so excited. He told me, listen, I don't understand. Where is your fiction imagination? But they knew when we, came, when we went to the, to, to the Bhutan, everyone knew about my book that I wrote uh, 10 years before. There was somebody made a small movie about it because he was studying a movie. So, so there is information. It's statistically impossible that something like that will happen, you know, if there is no yeah. something. So, so the conversation started when we started talking about God. And I think there's two things going, well, the, to, to parse it a little bit. One is the ability to telepathy, predict the future, things like that, which, you know, we have a great example here. And I think that is much more of a common example when you go to Tibet, Bhutan, India, they're more open to those things. And I've heard lots of stories that are just as amazing as that story. So that's part one. Part two is God, higher being, higher presence, that kind of thing. I think what happens is we, especially Jews, grow up with this idea of God. Uh, he's a man with you know, a white beard. Yes, no, good, sin, don't sin. Da, da. And so we kind of start with that westernized version. And, but as we grow up, that's kind of impossible to, to continue to believe in. And we kind of broaden and open our mind a little bit. Well, if I'm not going to believe in that, what am I going to believe in? Because I have stories like this that happen to you. Well, there's something going on out there. I don't know what it's called. I don't know if it's God, whatever words you want to use, but there's something going on that's, I'm putting words in your mouth, that's above and beyond what we can comprehend. Yeah, well, you know, in we, we can blame, okay, blame in quotes, like the Bible too. Because you say in Bible is written that he created a, a Adam, in the mm -hmm. image of God. Yeah. Already, right. already they wrote it like that. Right. But who wrote the Bible? God didn't write the Bible. This mm -hmm. is definitely human being wrote the Bible. They, mm -hmm. But they were close, maybe they were close to God than us. They got information, they got, we know according to our belief that God gave the 10 commandments to Moses. That's clear according to our belief, not clear to others, but that's clear that that came from God. The rest is what Moses told him. Well, and Moses told, and God told Moses, and God told Aaron, and all this. So there is a conversation. Or, and also, Moshe, he saw the back of, of God. What does it mean, back? Does he have a tail? Or this is a wind? Or what? What, what do you mean? Did you see a fire? What my ear will be if you see a fire? So for me, all these are stories for us human beings because we cannot understand the concept of God. We cannot. Right, right. It's like a, a computer uh, trying to understand his creator. 
Now we, they, we, they are talking about AI, you know, uh, artificial technology, but you know, even to create the AI, the AI that we are looking, I know it because I'm dealing a lot with the, with the AI tech. It's impossible to create. Nobody could, could get even closer to the ability of the eye to see distance and color and to transfer it to the mind and explain what you see. And it's impossible. We cannot do it. Well, there, there is one, one funny thing, not funny, I remember, this is, when I read the Bible today, of course, I read it differently than when mm-hmm. I was a teenager. But when you read the Babylon, right? You read about Babylon. Let's say we believe the story. We don't know if a human being, right? But let's say we believe the story, okay? We don't, if it happened like that, or we don't know. But what they say that God saw that the people are building a building that will arrive to heaven, and then they will get close to him. But this is stupid. If God exists then and exists today, you know that building will not arrive to nowhere, right? Doesn't make a sense. Yeah. This is the same God, right? So we know that this is bullshit. It's not, it's not a real building, but it's a concept. What does it mean? God gave not just knowledge. He gave wisdom. He gave other things. I don't know what is, are these things. He gave them to the human beings. So they gathered together and they started to accumulate everything together and become like God. So God said, no, hey, 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 wait a second. I didn't give you that to replace me. But what did he do? He didn't take it from them. He only mingled or only changed their languages. What does it mean? It means that this knowledge or wisdom or whatever thing is exist among human beings. It exists in our DNA. It exists in South America or in tribe or in Japan or in China or in Israel with Jewish people because we are all the time with this. So we get maybe a little bit more because of that we are getting so many patents and so many Nobel prizes or something like that because we are still the ones that are very close to God all the time. And, and I, I'll, I will continue with it because I was asked so many times about it. So, so actually what I'm saying is that so when I explain this, so, so people tell me, oh, internet, you know, the internet today, I said, yeah, 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 that's part of it. But still, you cannot create a human being, you cannot create the world, you cannot. And then there is, you know, the concept of saying, oh, you know, the, it's not God, there was a big blow, how do you call it, the concept of there was a big blow, big bang, million, bang big, big bang, and yeah, yeah. I said, okay, who created the bang? Who was before the bang? Well, you know, um, you know, the, there's a famous cosmologist, Carl Sagan, he died yeah. a few years ago, and he said, if you want to make an apple pie, first you have to make a universe. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I when I was, a, a, I had a many that that would be another book experience in Japan experiences many many. And then it, it even comes to me today because people that experience to get to you say, I don't remember. They come to me and said, You remember this? I said, oh, oh, yeah, now I remember. But it's written. Everyone is written. Everything is written. I will keep records. One day we heard uh, my, my culture attache told me, Listen, Eli, there is a one professor in Doshisha University, I think, that he got a very high level prize from the emperor about writing uh, research about the Jew, the Hebrew language in the mid ages. Who is writing, you know, a Japanese guy that goes to the Hebrew university for five years, or so, so typical, you know? So the emperor gave him a, so he said, this is a good chance to make something out of it. I said, yeah, great. So I invited the emperor's uncle. Emperor mm-hmm. uncle, studied the, the Bereshit, the first, uh, the, the Genesis. first book, yeah, uh, Genesis, he, he learned from another ambassador and he also, so I become a good friend with him and I use this, for me it's a level, I'm using it in order to create more and more connections. We become very good friends, but he, at that time he was already 80 or 80 something years old, but I created the lunch, special lunch, and I brought two professors, both of them coined from Doshisha University, they're still there. I say, I don't know if they are still husband and wife, but they are still there. And uh, and we had the lunch, and we had, we brought some professor 
that he was a, 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 a physics, he got a Nobel Prize in physics, Japanese guy. And we, when we talked about, you know, languages and past, and he said, oh, we, in radioactive uh, system, we can measure the age of things until 400,000. More than that, it's not scientific. Maybe we can, maybe today they found out more, but at that time, that's mm -hmm. what was the level. Then one of them asked me, said, Ambassador, you look like, like you said, intellectual person, because I was antsy about anything I had something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, so what do you think will be the future language of the world? What do you think? I said, oh. Yeah, you think maybe people will say English, Chinese, maybe Japanese, you want to say Japanese or Esperanto, you know, they're trying to do mm -hmm. Esperanto, but I don't think. He said, so what do you think? I said, listen, we are developing our technology. We, when we think about something, we translate it into our language and we said it in English. I could say it in Japanese, same if I know Japanese. So I translated my mind, but if somebody will find a way to read your mind, then you put the machine of the reading mind, and we, you, you, you have a reading, reading, and you know, recording and reading, so we don't have to talk. And reading mind, not directly, but through uh, some machine. Today they are doing it with voice, right? Right. <laughs> Already they have it, but with voice. But also we I said, well, how did you come with this concept? I said, you ask me, so I had to come with a concept. But what what I'm saying is that. I told the professor, listen, 400,000 people are saying, oh, you Jewish saying 5,781. I said, no, 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 it's not exactly. We are saying that this world from what we say, Adam and Abraham, but according to, to the Kabbalah, there were like 300 worlds before this world and we are destroyed. I don't know if we're destroyed 100% or 70% or 90%. But our history of human beings in our region start in this place because they found in Japan 10,000 years community. They mm -hmm. can prove it. And there, there are so many. So I said, listen, guys, this is our history of our Jewish nations. You like it or don't like it, that's it. Yeah. So, so I think what, what's interesting about that is, not to get too far into the whole biblical thing, is I think I don't know if the details of are that critical i think what's more important is what can we learn from it to lead our lives better freer happier more compassionate whether the whether the world started five thousand years ago or six thousand or two hundred thousand like okay we can argue about that and we'll probably not agree or maybe we will agree doesn't really matter what's more important is what did we what can you learn from the bible that's going to make us a better human being yeah. and whether you know so uh Anyways, I don't want to get too far down that path, but that's no, a beautiful. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, when 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 I go to Japan and say I don't I I don't eat really kosher, but I don't eat pork because it's a symbol. Of course, it becomes a symbol. So I don't I tell them I don't. And then it's it's a good it's a trigger to explain to explain <laughs> what, uh, everything. Uh, yeah. Right. So, but but then when I told them, listen, listen, you know, it's very complicated. And, and what was done 33,000 years ago is not suitable to today. And I had big argument with my uncle and my grandfather that were rabbis, etc. And I told them, listen, they asked me, why aren't you a rabbi? We, when you go to karate, all the family go to karate. You go to the paratrooper, everyone go to the bar. If you go, I said, no, everyone is rabbi except me. They don't need me to be a rabbi. But I'll tell you, I don't want to lead anyone about things that I don't know. I'll tell you why. I told you, listen, God, for me, created the house for a nation. 3,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago, 4,000 years ago with Abraham. Doesn't matter. Here you eat, here you go to the toilet, here you sleep, here you this, you do this and this and this. There, there, this is a house for the nation. They came to Israel, then there was others. There were neighbors and there were land and they, they have to change it. So they, what they did, they made the protections, they made some walls in the house. Then they went to the diaspora, then they have an influence. So then they put another wall of protection. Now, when you go to the house inside, even GPS will not help you. 
There is a, the Bible and the, and the Mishnah and the Gemara and the Tosfot and the explanation and Shulchan Aruch and, the, and then you have to go to the rabbi that he will explain to you what is right, what is wrong. Nobody has a Rentgen eyes to tell you this wall is not important. Take it out. It will not destroy the building. This wall not important and just all these walls. Nobody. So what the reforms that we're doing or the conservatives, which is their way, I don't, I don't blame or I don't claim anything. They said, we don't have Rentgen eyes, but we think what is important and we, that's what we do. I don't want to be like them. I'm not a leader of religion because I don't, I don't have Rentgen eyes. I don't want to destroy anything that is very construction, the, biz, the, strong, the strong construction of them. So I do my way of life. And I do whatever I believe. And every time I give them the story of Hillel and Shammai, I told them, you know, a person came, a Gentile, wanted to be Jewish, stood in one hand, a leg and asked Shammai 2,000 years ago, I want you to teach me Judaism in, when I'm standing on one leg. So he pushed him and he said, listen, he was very strict. You go study, come back to me. I, I cannot teach you in one leg. So when he came to Hillel, Hillel told him in a very smart way. He, don't even, he didn't tell him you must love your friend as you love yourself, which is written in the Bible. He told him in a negative way. Maybe you cannot love him. <laughs> he, he smells bad. He looks bad. He's stingy. I don't like, I cannot like him. But he told him what you hate to be done to yourself. Don't do it to your friend. Okay, you love yourself. You don't want to be done to you. Don't do it to the other. That's the whole Bible. He didn't tell him kosher. He didn't tell him Saturday. He didn't tell him God. He didn't tell him anything. Just between human beings. So it means the core of the things of all the Bible want us to be good human beings. You know? So that, human beings. that's a, a beautiful story. And um, interestingly enough, I had just read that story yesterday in preparing for this podcast, but that's, we don't have to go there. Um, but I interviewed, you know, in the last few months in the, in the podcast, not only rabbis, Baha'i, uh, Imam, um, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, Lama, and that's the core for all of them. Yeah. That's it's the core for all of them. You remember what I told about the mountain? Yeah. Everyone wants Everyone, it in yeah. the top. We are yeah. the same. Yeah. There is no difference. Yeah. That's why in the in the prophet words is they say kibeti bet tefila ikare lekola amin that my house in the future will be the house of all people. He didn't say which which language. He didn't say uh, which uh, which uh, uh, religion. He didn't say what they have to do. You know, I was asked when I was ambassador. I went to Okinawa and I gave a lecture. And uh, oh, every lecture like that, I was giving a demonstration. Mm -hmm. It was like the hall was 700 people was full. Outside of the hall, they put TVs. They never had this. Because Okinawa, the ambassador coming to give practice. Right. <laughs> and then give the... So, but there were like uh, 40 or 50 pastors that they were making their yearly event to meet about the Bible. So they met in Naha, in, to in Kyoto, in uh, Okinawa, because I gave the lecture there. And they said, please, we come to your lecture, but we, the next day, please come to our lunch and give us lunch lecture. So I said, okay, what is, what do you want me to talk about when I was in the lunch time? They said, oh, you talk about the Jewish belief in your, your belief. So, well, okay, I gave them and I gave examples and funny stories. Not every funny, they understood it. They destroy every joke. It's impossible to give a joke in Japan. <laughs> unless, you know, unless you know how to give Japanese jokes. Otherwise, don't go there. And then one, one of them, the oldest guy, he was 80 something or something. He said, listen, Ambassador, it seems like you know everything. I said, well, this is not. This is not a good, <laughs> not a compliment. If I gave you this impression, it's terrible. I don't know anything. Right. I, or I want to study from you, from everyone. If I think I know, then I stop studying. It's not. I, I don't. He said, okay, okay, okay. Don't be humble. He said, I said, it's not humble. It's a way. Okay. Doesn't matter. What is your question? He said, who is the Messiah? I told him, oh, that's a very simple question. He said, simple? I said, yes, it's a very simple question. And the answer is very simple. He said, how come? I said, 
we believe, I believe, that if he come, we know that it's him. Maybe it's Jesus, maybe it's David, maybe it's the, the emperor, maybe it's Buddha, maybe it's Muhammad, maybe it's all together to him, but it doesn't matter. You recognize him, I recognize him, we all recognize him. So why we are arguing now? You do your best, I do my best, maybe he will come. <laughs> So he said, I never heard this answer. I said, I never, I was never asked this question and I never gave this answer. You ask me, I give you an answer. That's and that I yeah. think it's a good good answer. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a beautiful answer. And um yeah, it just ties it, it ties us all together. But the other the other thing, going back a half a step before what you said that is like what I feel is the more I, I the more I know, the more I realize how much I don't know. Yeah. And I think, and it just keeps you more open to all the possibilities out there. You know, when I was, my son, who's going to edit, he doesn't edit this podcast, but he'll, he works on it. My son knows everything. He's 25 years old. Yeah. He knows everything and his parents know nothing. <laughs> you know, that's the mentality I had at 25. I know, of course I know. But the more I know, the more I realize I, I don't know. Um, I wanted to change gears a little bit. I wanted to ask you a story about a story that I found inspiring. Also, been getting back to the Shotokan organization, it relates to another goat on a fifth degree black belt, Sam Aboud. You, do you know Sam? Samir, Samir Aboud, yeah. Oh, Samir Aboud, right, Samir Aboud. His family's from Lebanon. And yeah. during one of the Arab-Israeli wars, I think he was in, you know, once again, the details are a little bit hazy. I think he was concerned about the safety of his family. Yeah. In Lebanon? Yeah. Do you know so what story? 82. 82. So you know what? Okay. Okay. And I believe he asked either you or Mr. Roshma to somehow take care of her or the family. Yeah. Is it, can you elaborate about that story? <laughs> well, I'm exposing myself, but this is this is long time I, ago. Finished. No, but I, but wait a second. When, you and I went back and forth in the email, and I said, "Is there anything you don't anything. want me?" Anything to... I told you, I told you anything, anything. Okay. anything <laughs> no, I'm exposing my. It doesn't matter. You'll see. You'll understand. So, Oshima Sensei called me, and he said, "So I said, okay, give me the details. Give me the details. Which village? What's her name? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I was, I was in the war. I was in the beginning. You know, it's very important also in the in the broadcasting this one to, to say when we entered Lebanon." even though they were shooting it at the Hezbollah and the Syrians from Lebanon, the order was you don't shoot when you go into a village, you don't shoot until they are shooting at you. You know how dangerous it is? It's crazy dangerous. And then I'll tell you a story that is connected to Karat and I'll come back to the answer, the question. There was one village, last village that I was, doesn't matter the name, just before the end of the war. We were first. In every village, in every fighting with, doesn't matter. We, I finished with only two wounded people. Nobody of my, my uh, company died. It's like a miracle, like we were protected from heaven. But once in one village, I was going in the middle of the village because my troops were spreading and I had to call them and the radio didn't work. So my two people, my radio people were running after me and one of them was Shlomo the father of Niv that was disappearing in the mountains. And he was running after me. I told, told him, what are you doing? He said, ah, you need a radio. I said, no, you hide like I, you were taught to save yourself. But he said, you are going in the middle of the street. I said, don't worry. I know what to do. When I was going in the middle of the street, nobody could shoot me. I was like, a, like I had sensors. I could feel Every eye that was looking to me from a window, or from a door, from the second or the third, was not big buildings, it's a village. Nobody could surprise me. I was like an antenna walking with sensors. And I was totally calm. I was 100% calm. And I called my soldiers and I collected them and it brought on the cars and went out. You know, the, the, the villages, they, they gave us, a, a, how do you say, cherries. They were so friendly. Oh, you saved us. You said at the beginning, we stayed too long. They didn't like it anyway. So we stayed in Lebanon after this, after this, it was June to, to, uh, 1982. Then the army stayed a few years later. But uh, after 82, we went only, we were only 45 days. We were recruited after that for another two weeks to go into uh, to, uh, 
uh, Beirut, but we didn't, there was an agreement, so we went out. So, but for two months, I was more than two months, like two months and a half, three months, I was <laughs> in the army in and out. I was a businessman. I lost a lot of money. But that was good feeling for me that we succeeded to, to that the life in, in the center of the country were normal, and we were fighting yeah, in order to give them safety. So when Sensei Hashima approached me, I could enter Lebanon anywhere because I'm a reserve. I reserve, and I'm a, I was a major at that time, space, special unit. Everyone respect. If I took my, my uniform, and I, even if they don't recruit me, I'm not going to be recruited. I can go even with a civil, civil car. But I can arrange to take her out. What to do afterwards, I don't know. I said, I'll bring, I'll bring her to my house. I'll keep her, and then I'll find a way. I don't know. I don't know. He's asked. I know. I I knew. I, I knew uh, uh, Samir Abu, and, and I, I met him in. A, when was it? When was it in? A, no, it was no, no. Maybe yeah. I, maybe I met him in Paris, or maybe later. I'm Eighty-four. I met him. Not afterwards. I met him. I I, I didn't know that Oshima Sensei asked. I think I didn't meet him before. I told him, listen, it's on. I'm going to do it. And I arranged everything. Everything was then just before going. They said, oh, it's okay. She's safe. No problem. You don't have to do that. So okay. Same. So that, yeah. What does does Mr. Oshima or does Samir know that that's what your plan was to go and yeah, take her yeah. out? Yeah. I told him because she had to know. What, right. what an Israeli <laughs> officer will come to right. her house. Right. Yeah, she had it. Yeah. yeah. So so you served as an Israeli ambassador to Japan from 2004 to 2007. Have you been following any of the Olympics going on in Japan the last few weeks? Yeah, but uh, I, uh, of course, I looked. But for me, karate is, is not, it's, it's doesn't. It's not suitable for me. It, it will be, it can destroy the karate as it destroyed the judo. You know? Right. Judo so, is, is like a struggling and fighting and hitting. It's not, it's not the judo that was before. It's a competition, shouting, you know, that's not a way of life. It, of course, some things were left there. The respect, the bow, etc. But But many things were disappeared. So yeah, I watched a few of the, the kata forms. Uh, that the gold medalist won. And uh, a lot of great concentration. I'm sure these guys and gals have practiced it thousands and thousands of times. But it's interesting to me to notice some of the differences between what they do, which is beautiful. It's a different way to get to the top of the mountain versus Shotokan organization, which is, it seems like they're um, a lot of shoulder power. It feels like the ki, the, the sound that they make, you know, uh, comes from the head and the face instead of the the tanden. Um, their kicks, their heels are up off the ground, so they're not really grounded. Any any thoughts about that? No, well, I know, I know, kata competition. It's not. I, I'm telling you, I participated even in that many years ago. I know. So what? That's what destroyed my karate. I told you, I had to cut. My kata, all the feeling of the streaming, of the feeling of the of the when when you when actually for us when you go go to the uh, high level, kata is like a meditation. You have to do kata in a meditation way. If you cut it this way, there is no way to do it. No, no way. It will not stream. It will not flow. It will not have an endless. Of course, from time to time, you have to focus the energy. It's fine, but still you are in a meditation. You can control, you can focus, you can open, you can like a flower, you can be like a wind, you can be like fire, we can water, whatever you can be, whatever you want, but you don't have to show it's your kata. Mm. The idea is that finally you are doing your kata, not the kata for people to see. You are implementing your your uh, expression. Uh, yeah, expression. Interpre interpretation. Interpretation. Your DNA. Your, you know, we we don't we we try to change the DNA. It's not possible to change the DNA. We 
we are born with the DNA, right? And then you can soften it. You can learn, you can strengthen things, you can weaken other things, you know, but still mm -hmm. that's what you are. You are mm -hmm. what you are. So you have, when you learn how to do it in a beautiful way, to take what we say, say all the mental blocks out and then to show your beauty. Then when you show it, it's not a show. It can be very, look at the kata of Onosan. Onosan looks terrible kata, but it's his kata. <laughs> they try to enter into his kata. It's well not possible. It's mm -hmm. something complete. It's something, it, it is kata, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why when you see Godans, they do the same kata, they do different. Why? Because it's their kata. They finally arrive. But when they arrive to this position, now they have to find. There is another stage. Godan is not the end. Godan, it's another, like Shodan is a stage. Sandan is a stage. Godan is another stage. We gave you the tools. Now you go find. Mm -hmm. There is no limit. You have to continue. Well, the end of the Shama Hillel story, you left out the very, very end. When Hillel said, what you don't like done to you, don't do to someone else. Then he said, go and study. Yeah, then go and study. Yeah. But you know, there is also one sentence. No, you not every sentence is like, oh, this is the sentence you have to follow. But there is a, another sentence that say, if you are a righteous, righteous, how do you say tzaddik? Righteous, uh, righteous. Right, righteous. Yeah. If you are righteous, you can do your own way. They mm -hmm. don't say what is your way. Why? Because everything you do is the right thing to do. So it doesn't matter what kind. Well, what can you, you can you say to people that they are like that, that are helping everyone, that are doing the right things all the time, you are not going the right way? What does it, what, what do you mean? They are doing it the right way. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to uh, elaborate a little bit, which is if someone comes from a selfless perspective, yeah. then they're not going to get it wrong. If it's all about me, 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 then, yeah. you know, that's a different story. So, you know, because that's what righteous or tzaddik, someone yeah. who really cares, compassion for others, what, yeah. are, they, what are they going to get wrong? Yeah, it's not. It's all the time he's looking what is the right thing to do. Not for me, right. for everyone else. Okay, right. I, will, I will give you, not because I'm tzaddik, I'll give you something about, about, the, about the meditation. How, in a certain time of my, my life, I was like the advisor, assistant to the defense minister. And it doesn't matter, I created kind of a forum like a shadow government with all the assistants. And I started to solve problems all over the country since the establishment of Israel. And I succeeded. So every two weeks I was coming to the cabinet. At that time, Bibi was, Benjamin Netanyahu was the first round. Mm -hmm. So he is the same age as me, Eli, what are you doing here? He said, I said, if you don't mean, I'll go. He said, no, 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 stay, stay. Because everything I said, everyone agreed. No argument with all the with all the uh, ministers, but what happened is when I found when I started to solve problems around the country, I people started to ask me, not connection to defense ministry at all, nothing, everything, Arabs, Jewish, Christian, everyone was asking because they saw and he's solving problems. Why not to ask him? So piles were, my tables was like, and every day I had like 12, 14 meetings, you know, if I'm not going out. So I was sitting, people gathering, sometimes general, sometimes mayor, sometimes architect, sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't remember what is the meeting about. Every day, 12, 14 meetings, you don't know. But then I, I said, okay, uh, who invited this meeting? Okay, you, okay. Then I, I sit like that. That was not a joke, like that. I sit like that. And I said, okay, stop, okay. Yeah. Okay, you answer. You want to want to speak? I, I don't. Know. Then after thirty minutes or something like that, I said, "Okay, decision." I said, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't speak. I didn't. Know. I said, "Okay, if you don't agree to my decision, we open the discussion again." Not a big deal. Still, we have thirty minutes, my friend, or forty minutes, or I don't know. Sometimes after ten minutes, a decision, and then. For two years, two years and three months when I was in this, no, two years exactly when I was in this job, was no, even not one time that somebody uh, uh, resisted to my, uh, my decision. 
It's impossible to say, statistically impossible. And then when, when I finished my, some, when I went to the parliament, I started to run to parliament. I said, if I can do that, maybe I'll be the prime minister. So I will run to the parliament. So my, the one that replaced me was one of my deputies. So he said, Eli, I cannot do what you're doing. I said, no, no, of course you can do. You don't have to be Godan or something like that. You, you were with me. What did I do? I didn't sleep. You know, many times, not many times, but few times I would say, excuse me, guys, we cannot make a decision to me. There is not enough information. There is not this and this. Please, you check this, you check this. We will meet in one week. In two weeks, we'll make a decision. Also to this, nobody, nobody argue. I told him, listen, you take your ego out. You know what you want. You know what you want to be the result to be. Not all the time you make the decision because there are many higher people there and everyone has his own power, mayor of the city or minister of this or their man. So, but, but, but you take your ego out, you concentrate, you empty yourself, then you listen. And then the decision will come. Don't think. When you feel the decision, start talking. You don't know even what will come from your mouth. You just talk. He came to me after three months. He told me, Eli, I'm not doing 12 minute meetings. <laughs> Only three, four meetings today, but it works. And he doesn't know karate or any martial art. He just experienced it. And because he's a human being, he's open-minded, he could do it. You empty yourself. You give the all. And that's not only logic. There are powers. You feel the power. You know that if you do something like that, that will not work. This one will stop it. And this, so you feel everything together and then you start talking. Sometimes I wrote notes. It's very complicated issues. So I, don't, I don't know what they're talking about. Just a second, I ask questions. Not all the time I close my eyes. But before making a decision, always I close my eyes like this. Okay, decision. Something like that. So it was... So yeah. what you're doing is you're, you're kind of going into a, a meditative state. <clears throat> Your mind is calm. It's clear. And now you're an antenna and you're listening and absorbing. And then you have enough confidence and trust that your mind is going to be able to go, okay, got it. And then here's a solution. Yeah. And a, a lot of that certainly comes from your ability to meditate, whether you have a meditation practice or not. The fact that you did karate in Shotokan for so many, many years, that's meditation. Mm -hmm. And the ability to get rid of your ego and the ability not to have little tiny voices going. So you're truly in the moment. Yeah. It's and not in the moment, you can, you can do that. That's right. That's right. But I'll tell you something. Uh, the decision didn't come from the brain. Okay. The well, came, the decision came from the hara, from the kishke. Okay. From what you call so I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, absolutely. So we have to may, I don't want to say brain. Let's use the word mind. Mind. Okay. It came from the big mind. Yeah. It's called, you know? it's connected. This it's is, con this <laughs> is connected. It's yeah. one thing. It's one thing. It's one thing. You don't think what is the one thing, but you feel it here and you feel it here. Mm -hmm. And what comes to your mouth is the, 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 the conclusion. Mm -hmm. of what is the right thing to do? Right. Right the thing to right. do. Not what's and best for not, Ellie, not what's best for this, not what's best, but just this is the right thing to do. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what people felt. Oh, why, why we didn't think about it? It's so simple. Most of the time, it's very, very simple. It's not complicated. You know, sometimes I will, okay. I, I, I had to do many things in, in my life in, to be creative in order to succeed. There is in the mission. Sometimes I took a mission, right? There is a problem. I have to solve the problem and I have to take the mission upon myself. And then there is so many resistance. Jewish people are very complicated people. This is a difficult Eretz uh, Ochelet we said, like uh, mm -hmm. eating it. You know, there is a very famous uh, uh, story about uh, I don't know if it was Regan or, or was um, in, in 1974, who was the who was the president of United States? Oh, you're embarrassing me. Um, yeah. I, I want to say Carter, but I don't know. I could look at <laughs> yeah, maybe that okay. better. So, Golda Meir 
after the war came to him and said, listen, we have three million people over there. You know, it's a big nation, three million. <laughs> and we are people coming from all over the world and different languages and different culture and that. And we have enemies coming from every mm -hmm. direction and we have mm -hmm. so, and it's very, very difficult to, I need your help. So he told, yeah. her, what you, he told her, what are you talking about? I have 200 million people or 250 right, 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 million right, right. people. Yeah, yeah. And I have all languages and I have problems in uh, Cuba or Vietnam. I don't remember who was there. And I have all these problems. She said, no, 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 Mr. President. You have 200 million citizens. I have 3 million prime ministers. Right. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it's true. Everyone it's, is it's big true. head. Everyone is think that he can be the prime minister. They know that, yeah, they know. Like your son, he knows everything. You know, that's it. But that's kind of where, by the way, so in 1972 was uh, President Nixon, our wonderful um, President Nixon. So... Um, yeah, it was Nixon. Yeah, but Nixon. Nixon. But that's kind of where the skill comes in. So it's a beautiful thing, I think. And I, and I think listening is a very underrated skill. Very underrated. The ability to listen, to be in the moment, not to be thinking, oh, he's wrong, he's right, I would do it differently, they don't know what they're talking about, what an idiot. To get rid of that, be in the present moment and listen. Very underrated skill. Yeah. But then the second skill is being able to, I don't want to I mean, coordinate, I don't know if that's the right word, but to achieve your goal with so many different um, people because they have egos too. They, everyone's got their own version of what they want or need or think is best for them. We're seeing that now, of course, with this whole vaccine thing, how, how crazy it can really, really get. So, but you brought two skills to the table. One, the ability to be in the moment, listen, absorb, connect with the big mind, the hara, the tanden, whatever. And then the ability to, okay, good, I, great. Thanks for the solution. Go implement. Good luck with that. Yeah. Implementation is you know, the other ninety percent of the game. Yeah, well, implementation always the, is one. One of the thing is, you know, that when I came to be ambassador, they were really I felt the resistance of my team, the Israeli team. They were like seven, you know, attaché. They brought to them like ambassador of not from the foreign ministry. He's a right wing person. He's a karateka. He thinks he knows about Japan. Right, what, right. You know, what should we do? It's not a diplomat. And then when I started, the, I told them, listen, next three sun, uh, Fridays, we are going to have a brainstorming and we are making the new program. It was January, January 2004. And I told them, listen, I can feel you. You don't know that. <laughs> every, every one of you has a big head. You are very smart people. You have a lot of information and knowledge. And you think you better than me. And I want to tell you, I think so too. <laughs> I, so the, the, the moment I said it and you agree to it, you take the responsibility. It means if you think you can be ambassador, then you have to take the responsibility and act like ambassadors. And my responsibility is to give you a backup. That everything you, that you succeed, you get the credit. Everything that you fail, I fail. So they didn't believe me, but after a few months, they believed. And what happened? They started to act and to implement and to do things because they are usually afraid in you know, diplomats. Let's do it this way or this way. Let's go. Let's not be wet, you know, don't be right. wet, you know. So I said, no, no, you have to be wet. <laughs> you have to swim. <laughs> you have to dive. You have to do whatever. But I will give you the backup. So... Usually the head of a system, the head of a company, the head of whatever, when he wants the implementation, he has to give, first of all, the chance to them to, to how do you say, to, to give what they think is the right thing to do, to give their ideas because they have, and then after everything together, he said, okay, I think you can do it, you do it, I give you the backup. I will be after you all the time. When you need me, I will be there. So it's it's an implementation and also a leadership. It's of, of course professional. You have to make a, a, a decision that can be implemented, not uh, out of the- of Yeah, the, of course. The, well, well, what's also beautiful about that, and 
I don't want to talk so much about myself, but in our company, we do that. We, we try to empower people. Yeah. And in some ways, the way I look at it, frankly, I have a lot of people working for me is, uh, I work for them. You know, they think yeah. they work for me. I feel like I work for them. You give them the power. You, if you know what to do, you think you know what to do. Great. You go and do it. Yeah. And, and, a- and I'll support you. So you give them that empowerment. They feel that and they go out there and they try it. And it's not, you don't always succeed, but that's okay. You figure out what you did wrong. You go do it differently. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you another example that people, they, they were a little bit afraid of me, but they appreciated. it. They knew my background. But when I finished the embassy, I was asked to be the chairman of the board of Ariel College. They wanted to be university. Mm-hmm. It's Maria. Right. 30 minutes from Tel Aviv. It's the center of the country. And then they told me, no, no way, it's Judea Samaria, it's Samaria, nobody will give us, you know, even we are making research and budget is, we are collecting still, nobody will give us. But they said, okay, bring Eli Cohen to be the chairman. So when I came, I said, but all the people in the board, the professors and all the people that were before, they looked to say, okay, he was ambassador, what is connection to the academy? And then I told them, okay, this is the first uh, meeting. And I saw, I, I read the uh, protocols of your previous meetings. And uh, I saw that you were sitting three hours. You know, three hours is too long. We, we are starting today, okay, 10 minutes, this introduction, my introduction, etc. But uh, one hour and a half. And we finish one hour and a half. If you, if you didn't finish the old issues, it's finished. We cut it like a saw. They didn't believe. But they didn't believe I succeed in the first day. But I, what, what happened is I heard somebody said an idea, smart idea. And then the second one is also a professor said, I agree with him. And he started to give a lecture. So excuse me, just a second. Are you insulting, insulting our intelligence? He said, what, what, what do you mean? I had to give them a shock. I told him, what, you agree to what he said? Yeah. So you can say, I agree, and give another idea. Why do we have to hear? We are not your students. Okay. He was like shocked. Okay, I agree. He like insulted. Okay, I agree. Okay, next one. So another one, give another, another idea, good idea. And then he started to explain the idea in a different way. I said, excuse me. Just a second. You, you explained. We understood. The, everyone understood. I asked everyone. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have to, uh, to explain? You, you think we are students. Again, you are a professor. You are a, a director general of a company or whatever. You give us a credit that we understood your first explanation. You don't have to give us another angle or another angle. This is your idea. This is the explanation. Makes sense. Let's go on. It was written. If we need to vote, we will vote. Okay, okay, okay. Next meeting. Already this spoke much shortly. <laughs> yeah. Next meeting, then every then one hour and a half. Finished. They knew. They knew if you have to speak, you have to speak short. You have to speak clear. And then they, we become university. The next day, we be, the other university in Israel went to the Supreme Court against us, but didn't succeed. The Supreme Court threw them from the floor. So, so they are university. They are doing research. The government doesn't pay them, but they're doing that. Anyway, the next week after we become university, four years, it was four years, I resigned. They told me, why are you resigning? It's now university. I said, Mission accomplished, guys. You know, you're making all the time politics. I'm going to Japan. Everyone is calling me at two o'clock in the morning. You are crazy. I have my own my life. Mission accomplished. Bye-bye. <laughs> what's what's funny? Yeah, no, it's a great story. So what's funny about that is, you know, we have, in Judaism, there's the Bible, and then there's all kinds of commentary. Yeah. So that's how those people are trained. Is yeah. I got to give you the Rashi, and I got to give you the Tosva, and da, 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 da. it's like commentary, commentary, and you're saying, no. We don't need that. We all agree. Let's move on. Um, that's great. That's a great story. So, la- last couple of questions. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. So, one thing I noticed, you know, getting back to karate practice, is the first 10, 20 years of my practice was the mentality I felt after practice was to approach every conflict outside the dojo as kumite or a battle, and I started to realize that you know if you only have a hammer 
everything yeah. starts to look like a nail. <laughs> yeah. And, and it took me a lot of time, you know, getting older, practicing more, et cetera, et cetera, that some tool that not everything has to be a fight. Yeah. Some tools are softer, more effective than the hammer. You know, there's a quote somewhere in, you know, I don't know if Mr. Fonokoshi or Mr. Oshima, you know, better to defeat the opponent without fighting. So how do you teach that? Or how do students learn that? Given that certainly the first 10, 20 years or 30, whatever, everything's fight, fight, fight. Yeah, well, uh, you know, once uh, I asked one of the young people, relatively in Israel, that to take the Godan test. Mm -hmm. And he was the best fighter in Israel, Shotoka, and he was getting medals, and he was talented, but he was good at for me. Because one of the things that uh, 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 I measure good at, of course, is that he is humble, and his character is good, and the karate is part of him. It's not something that he has to show, I'm now doing karate, or oh, now I'm, it's like, it's, it's, karate is me, me is karate, whatever. So uh, he came to practice with me at my house. We, we have, I have a kind of a, not that I have a big balcony and I have a salon and I like all my house is like a dojo. Right. And uh, I haven't, I don't have a dojo since 1986. I had, I have a dojo in Tokyo. I opened a dojo in oh, 2004. Okay. Still exists. This is the first dojo for Oshima Sensei in Japan. Actually the name Shotokan Oshima Dojo started for my dojo in Tokyo. <laughs> Interesting. Great. <laughs> yeah, because he, when I invited him, he said, why are you calling it to Oshima? I said, listen, because there are many Shotokans here and you are my teacher. But he said, oh, if you call it Shotokan Oshima Dojo, then I have to come. I said, okay, come. <laughs> so he came to the opening. And, uh, and, uh, and he came, this guy, Yaniv, Yaniv his name, and he, I practiced with him, Yai, and the other things, and we, I fixed his kata, and I started to do kumite with him. So he said, Eli, what, 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 this is a new style? This is another style? I told him, no, Yaniv, the problem with you is that you are all the time representing Shotokan in kumite and tournaments, etc., etc. And the problem is that you think this is karate. And you are talented and you are very good and the karate is part of you, but you have to change. You have one year now. You have you one year to change. So it's very, uh, you know, Ono-san, and also Mary I like to do that, I remember. He said, oh, why do we have to go through the hard way? <laughs> Let <laughs> teach Irimi from the first day, you know, like teach Irimi from the first day. It doesn't work. It can work if you find some talented pe person that all his life was, you know, in the wartime fighting, street fighter, I don't know, like that or whatever, like that. And then, okay, now you calm down. <laughs> you already been there. Okay, you right. calm down. No, then now start making meditation, doing kata. Like when you commit a drink, like a meditation. Well, what do you mean meditation? I have to kill him. What, what meditation? It's, what are you talking about? And, uh, and uh, it's, there is no, actually there is no short. There is no short. You, why? Because if you are making short end, you're missing something in the base. Mm -hmm. And then you can be there, but then you will not be complete. Very difficult to return to this. I, I started to teach and also I, 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 I think I gave it a, a the practice in uh, North Carolina, I think one of the practice I used it, and then Sensei Oshima told me, what is this? <laughs> I said, Sensei, it's a way of teaching. It's not a new style. It's you, I, I'll actually, I show you. He said, oh, okay, okay. I, I, I spoke about the Golin no Sho, the five elements, you know? Let's do connected to health, ground, you know, soil, Water, wind, fire, and emptiness and void, right? And how can we do a show air shoulder like that? Or how can we do kumite like that? How can we implement this kind of philosophy into the practice? Into the real practice. Then there's something that why air shodan or why oizuki or why maigiri? 
you take something that you don't have to think that it's already there. I don't have to think about the movement already. I know every place, but I know where to put the ikite. I know where to put my heel. I know where to put my hips. I know where to put my head. So sometimes you have to fix everything before we start, okay? To make like a different levels in the group. So you make some exercises in order to put them in the same, more or less. Then you tell them, okay, forget about what you learned. What do you mean forget? Water doesn't have any hill, but still water is connected to the ground. It's not flying in the air, right? It's still connected, but it's streaming. So it's almost your reaction, but all the time moving, all the non-stop. You cannot, even when you hit the, the, the wall, you hit the wall and come back. So there's no stop. Land root is more, stable, is more in place, like techie, so you are very heavy, you are very connected to the ground. So there are exercises how to do that. So you do only that for one hour, two hours, three hours. Then you go only this. Then you make wind. What is wind? Wind is no connection. We are not birds because we don't have a, a, a wings, you know? But also birds are using some technique in order to fly, right? So you use some technique in order to disconnect yourself from the land. Don't be connected to the land. Forget about the earth. Forget about the water. We are, Shotokan is more, our Shotokan is more like water, water and air. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very connect, very difficult to say to people, forget about it. Like now jump, everything you do by jumping. Everything is not connected now, but it's not just jumping. The wind has power. It's go this way, it's very flexible. So use your hands, your legs, your hips, your knees, your everything you use. Then I'll give you another example in a minute. Then you make a fire. But what is a fire? Fire can be elect, 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 electrostatic energy mm -hmm. right. in your skin. Oh, you are all fire. You can explode like a volcano, but you can be like in, in place like fire, like jump, like energetic, like very, very strong, not like wind in a different way, in a different way like fire. So there is a fire that is like more static, but it's still there. It's still sensing everything. And there is a fire that exploding. And then there is a void. So how can you make a void? You can make a void after you become full. You cannot make void from the beginning. After you become full of everything, you know the technology, then you don't know anything. You like, make this meeting, I nothing. I don't, but you have already. You accomplished, you know that. Your subconscious will react in the right way. If it will be water or fire or, or just stay in place like a storm, whatever. Whatever will be needed, it will act because you experience it and you know it. So the void is using all what you have learned before, but you don't have to think this way because the moment you think this way, you already directed it. So you have to be totally believing in the void 100%, you know, in order to be, to be so, so actually you, well, I'll tell you another story that is, you know, you told me stories. In 1981 or something like that, when uh, Sensei nominated me as the BBC president of Israel Shotokan, and I was the only Sundan or something like that, Mary Ann was our teacher and they, he was doing, but okay, he said, so I was, I had to practice more and more and more. And then he came and I told him, Sensei, Sensei, uh, is uh, our lips is like gyroscope, you know, like a gyroscope, it's a center that if I bring my knee like this, my leg like this, my body all around the gyroscope, he looked at me, he said, hey. he said, they really got crazy or something. He said, he said, he didn't answer. The next year, I don't remember if it was 80 or 81 or 82, the war time, I don't know, he came, and he looked at me, he said, he came out of the airplane, I met him, he said, Ellie, it's not possible. I said, well, what not possible? I didn't know. He was one year thinking about my question. <laughs> he said, 
Okuyama sensei, he has a very, he was very thin and he very, very flexible hips. And so he could put his hips like this and change this. And the people of circus, they can do many. But the concept is right. <laughs> but our body is not like that. We are not circus people. We cannot make break dance like break dance is doing. But the concept is like that. You have to be everywhere, everywhere by there is a center. So for me now the center is the hara more than the hips. It's the still is still a tool for the hara. But uh, well, was it was like 30, 40 years ago. So things are changed, were developed. And now I'm not using a gyroscope, which is nice, nice. I'm using an octopus. Beautiful. Saying, Your hara is like a center of the octopus. And you have all your body is, is controlled by this center. And don't think we, you, your comp computer or your sense, it can feel every, every part because you practice fire, you practice water, you practice, you practice a wind, you, you, you can do everything. You are not limited. You are in the, in the space, but even though you are on the ground because you have, you have gravity, that's what we have. But, uh, but you, the sense is like that. And then when you feel like that, you become very, very, uh, your mind is, is flexible. But when you have to be focused, you have to be focused. That's all the time the contradiction between openness and focus. Because if you are all the time openness, open, then you don't find a way. You are all the time open. Where, where, where shall I go? So you open, something come to you, okay. I have to go this way. I use it. Okay, next time I open again. Okay, so there is a game between the openness and the focus. And the same, same again with the, the octopus, you know? Sometimes you are, you have to be stick like this. Sometimes you have to be flexible. Sometimes you have to, to roll around. Some, you have, the, there is no limit. So, but in order to be there, you, have, you know, one, one of the science, uh, sport science, they found out, uh, that he, in order to make a movement as an instinct movement of you subconsciously, you have to make it like 30,000 times. Mm -hmm. But if you make a mistake 30,000 times, you compound your mistake. It's terrible. You have to do 60,000 times in order to, to go. To undo it. <laughs> yeah. So that's why the responsibility of the teachers is very 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 serious because you, they have to teach you the right way to do it from the beginning otherwise it's very correct it's difficult to correct mistakes from the that you you done at the the day time the day one that's why people tell me what happened with him is he you done go done and he's he's you no know, he forgot everything he said no he's not practicing his subconscious is like shodan is like nidan that's what he did a lot so you come back to that. But if you will continue to practice as Yodan, he, his subconscious will be Yodan. So that's why every stage has its own base. Every stage you, you, you follow it, you, you mm -hmm. use it in order to climb. Then you open. Then there is no stage. Hmm. Yeah. Be wonderful description. Thank you. So when I interact with Godons, some Yodons, more often than not, outside of the class, there's a genuine kindness or compassion that you can feel. And um, I remember there was a story, you have it in the book, about my, my wife and I, we were fortunate, to have, fortunate enough to have dinner with Mr. Oshima 10 or 15 years ago. He told us the story you tell about in the book where he was in a park in France and all these birds are coming up to him. Yeah. All these birds. And he was with someone else, uh, another black belt. No birds would come up to him, but the birds would land on Mr. Oshima. They'd be just very friendly. And he explained that the birds were not afraid of him. They didn't feel fear. Yeah. And I feel that also when I interact with, like I said, Godons and, and some Yodons yeah. as well, this beautiful feeling of kindness, compassion. Any, any thoughts about that? Because well, we're doing karate, we're trying to kill people, and yet we have this other energy that evolves for some of know, us. 
it's it's a sensei always described that uh, every level is kind of like a onion that you are mm. taking one one shield of your mental block out in order to take all your mental block out and hopefully in Godan you will be you will be clean but we know that it's not it's in God when you arrive to Godan you have the tools to continue by yourself but it's not finished but you have now all the tools you learn you practice you experience you the the emotions the feelings the 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 compassion the friend the friendship etc you know there is a legend about uh, uh, how karate started we don't know really but there are stories you know mm-hmm. that uh, uh, his name was uh, Buddhi Dharma or Dashi Daruma, it depends right. who is calling him. And uh, the, the story, I don't know if it's true or not. I'm telling you some of the stories, but it's nice. The story is nice by itself. When you're done, I'm going to look it up on the internet and then we'll know if it's fact or not. Yeah, yeah, but no. <laughs> in the internet, the stories are in the internet. But some of them are saying, no, no, it's not like that. Not, they don't know. Some people say it was 1,500 years ago. Some people say 400 years ago. So what did the truth? In Karate Dokyuan, I think he said 1,500 years mm-hmm. ago. Right. Sensei is not true. It is like that so long. But maybe, you know, who knows? So anyway, the story is that he came to, to, to China in order to teach them Zen Buddhism, actually to be enlightened. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. But they could not, they could not Couldn't do it. Couldn't sit that long. Yeah so, he, yeah, so he said, oh, why I can do it? Because I faced death many times and I survived. So I, could, I can gather the, the, the feeling of death and I can do it immediately without subconscious, just by decision. It's part of me. I want to concentrate, I concentrate. I want to do like this, I can do. I don't have to be in the situation. It becomes part of me. So in, in order to, to make them also part of it, they have to face this. So he made them face this and then they died. Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, okay, I have to teach them how to live, not to kill them. For example, I don't know if he did it. Or he said, okay, we have to cross this canyon on this stick. Concentrate, concentrate. They could not concentrate, fall down. Okay, I'm bringing the sword like this. You concentrate, I move it down. If you don't move it down, I'll cut, cut you. So something like that. So I said, oh, they don't have the tools to do what I asked them to do. So I have to teach them step by step. I have to teach them how to do ikite and how to stand with the heels where to put the hips, then want to move more move movement, and then want to move with an p- opponent like Ipon Kumite, and then maybe someone Kumite, or I do Ipon Kumite or something, then, 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 then they have to do Irimi, because Irimi is that what they are looking. They, you have to sacrifice yourself mm-hmm. to go through the opponent. You have to go through the soul. Then you go to heaven. You arrive through hell to heaven. You go to the other side of the soul. So, but in order to reach there, you have to have the tools. It's that you tell the, the, the person, okay, you write an essay for New York Times now, but I don't know English. Okay, alphabet. Okay, one letter. Okay, sentence. Okay, no, this. Okay, read the book. This is etc. Okay, now you are ready. You write an essay. Oh, well, everyone will write a different essay, different level, etc., etc. But that's if you want to compare, it's something like that. So. So the, the, the comparison says that, listen, be patient. Young people don't have patience. They want to everything now. Now I have a, a grandson, he wants now, okay, he started to study karate, he studied when he was a kid. Now he came to another class and the teacher said, oh, he's very talented because of grandson of Eli. I said, no, he doesn't know. He was practicing with me since he was two years. He doesn't know that he was practicing. I was pushing him, telling him, punching him, or kicking him. Whatever. Then when he comes, he does it, you know, like a, he's still even 8Q level. It's not, not so. But he wants, no, no, for a grandpa. Okay, you teach me that. No, 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 I want to kick him. He's 14 years old now. He wants to do, to now, now to do everything now. So that's natural also. 
So if it's natural, okay, we teach them how to be strong, how to be fast, how to, but we have to teach them the right thing. Not like Sensei Hashima was doing Yoko Geri, <laughs> hurt his back because nobody was there to teach him, you know? Right. Yeah. So my, th my thinking, which is, I think is what you're saying, you know, this Roshima and a lot of Godons is that dealing with life or death, which is kind of what happens in, in a lot of these practices or polishing the mind, which is what happens when you go into an intense practice and you just, all of a sudden the mind slows down and just like is gone. There's no more whining and complaining, but for not just days and weeks, months, years, but 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And then the ego, or like you said, the mental blocks are gone. The ego is reduced and what's left is the center of the onion, which is an understanding I think of being compassionate or kind or, or genuine. But you, we took out the from the equation. We took out the special training. The special that's training is part of it. Absolutely, it's not part of it. It's one of the most important part mm. because you can see. But you can see in many other karate groups that they also have this kind of uh, compassion and friendship because they, mm -hmm. they are. The, but with us, we are really friends. You know what we we compare it sometimes. What I compare it sometimes the special training like a friends of the same unit that going to the war. Good, beautiful. They, 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 they know each other. They know Western Kiba that she like that. But they, still they said, okay, I was like that too. <laughs> I, I cannot cheat. I have, don't have to cheat myself. I have to be, and then, okay, I have to show him the way. Like people, other people showed me the way, self-example. So in, in, in this way, we become a very, strong family we are kind of a family mm -hmm. you know and uh, you know yes right and, and in practice i mean that relates which is when you know even if you have an eighth q counting and they're leading the other 10 20 people they have that responsibility for the other 10 or 20 yeah there could be eight q white belt doesn't really matter or when you're holding kibidachi well i'm holding kibidachi by myself there's other people holding Kibidachi, but if I go a little bit lower, if I have a little bit stronger energy and spirit, they can feel that. So yeah. there is that connection that I can help others and, and that we're all supportive of each other. Yeah, definitely, yes. And then, and then you know, one of the things that I, I, I'm trying to, trying to follow, Oshima Sensei lead that is telling everything that he find immediately to some <coughs> so, <Sorry. Sentai. laughs> thank you. I got to. I got to. I said, you I see? Got to. <laughs> when you say different language than English or Hebrew, I answer Japanese. Right. I knew, I knew very well uh, French and uh, not so bad the uh, Arabic, but when I speak today French or Arabic, I mix it with Japanese words. <laughs> then the people look at me, what, what, what? I said, ah, sumimasen. Sen. Ah, eh, eh, pardon, pardon. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> And uh, um, no, well, I I I I, I missed the, the what I wanted wanted to to say. It was uh, concerning the uh, the compassion and the friendship and the and the, and the special training. Ah, teaching, teaching, the teaching others, sharing what you know. Mm. You know, the Swiss people asked me in the last, uh, not before the corona, to come to give a uh, practice every year. And I asked them, guys, okay. He said, no, and they said, no, no, we, we asked Ken Osborne to come one time. And, uh, and uh, since he's not coming, so we are looking for other people. But uh, I said, okay, but you're asking me, I say three, four, five times every year. He said, no, no, we, we want you to teach us, to teach us, uh, what you are teaching the Israelis. They look different when we meet them. I said, guys, I'm not hiding from you anything if you meant this. <laughs> I'm teaching you everything I know. You said, yeah, yeah, every time it's a new thing. I said, okay. So what do you, do you want? They said, okay, if you are doing it, it's fine. <laughs> Something like that. So in, in, in this way, the, the, when, when we are, I'll tell you something, the, in the system that I created, like the, the uh, Aleph Kaf, it's called AK, mm -hmm. Aleph Kaf, 
a gym healing system. Why Aleph Kaf? Because I wanted to write EC, Eli Cohen, but my daughter said, say Aleph Kaf. <laughs> Aleph Kaf is Eli Cohen in Hebrew. Nobody knows that it's Eli right. Cohen. So Aleph Kaf is good. So is one of one of the one of the principles is using isometric isometric uh, 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 muscles. To, to use a power isometric, you know, you know, tightening the muscles. And then I created four isometric exercises, but doesn't matter. One of them is the, the, the regular isometric that you tight the muscles. But one of the important thing is that you must breathe out when you tight the muscles, because otherwise you hold your breath and then blood is not working and the, and the oxygen is not moving. So at the beginning, you have to breathe out. After that, you can breathe in and out, no problem. But it's very difficult to do and tight. But after that, you know. So I told people, you know, I found out that when I'm standing in Kibadachi, instead of, you know, releasing the tension of my muscles that are uh, painful, I have to tight them. I'm sitting not moving, not doing anything, but tightening all my muscles and breathing out. What happened? The blood circulation started. In the beginning, it looks like stupid. Why are you stupid? You are make, giving more, you are making more hardship to your muscles? So no. If I'm tightening the muscles, then it's like circulating all the system. Then I can sit another five minutes. Okay. Then after five minutes again, I do it again. And if I tie, I have tight here, I just tight the muscles here. Shh, and release. You can do it if you have a problem with the knee. You are standing as Zen Kutsu. And the, le, le, let's say let front, uh, front, uh, leg, uh, front, uh, the front leg is the uh, left leg. And, but your knee is hurting. So you are going like a cripple forward. No, no. Before you move, tighten all the muscles around the knee. Tighten it. First of all, your movement will be without sign. <laughs> You'll find out that, oh, because you already tightened. So you didn't move like that. So it's a good thing, but you cannot tight all the time before opponent, but it's a practice for your knee. After sometimes you don't have to do it. But if you tighten it, what happens? The muscle are putting the, the bones in the right place and then protecting it. For example, when you go down in stairs, when you have a knee problem, it's a shock observer and it hurts. So tighten the muscle before and go like the shock observer already tight. It's a very funny way going down, but after a few times you learn how to do it and it's less painful. Yeah, well, I think that's a preview for, for when the book comes out. And I know I took a, I was in one of your classes, Zoom classes about six, nine months ago, and you did some of those isometric exercises and it just feels great. So, uh, so it's something that we can look forward to. And it makes sense also because when you're in a little bit of pain, usually what happens I think is your, that part of your body is kind of collapsing a little bit, but when you tighten it, it almost strengthens it, gives a little bit more strength. So it takes away the, the collapsing feeling that gravity is pulling it down. The, the muscles aren't doing their job because they're tired or in pain. And you're saying, no, go do your job. And then everyone feels better. That's right. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, now I can be your co-author. I'm joking about <laughs> that. Okay. Last two questions for you. Um, so this question comes after I ask you about whether you believe in God. So just kind of put it in context. So where do you think your spirit or your soul will go when you pass on from this life? Another dimension. I know. It will can go you be to more, more specific? No, another dimension, uh, you know, rebirth, uh, we don't go anywhere, fiction, heaven, there hell. Many, there are many fiction movies, you know, they're making like a circle, you jump through the circle, you are in the past or in the world, something like that. I don't know, because I don't know, but I can feel it, that the other souls are existing, and I experience things like that. I experience souls that came to help me in certain way, my grandma. It's not my imagination, whatever you can say, but she came to help me in certain, in certain difficulty. And I was shocked because she never came. And I, do, I never had connection to her, but in a certain time she came. They don't come because they have their own life. 
they are not connected, they are maybe connected, I don't know if they are connected or not, but I think they have their own circle. They have another way of life or not life, or I don't know what is it, but existence, because the soul is going there. But sometimes, sometimes they can come to this dimension, but in a different, different figure or a different way. You know, and also there are messengers of God. Sometimes they don't know that they are messengers of God. Sometimes they do something and somebody said, oh, you are my angel, I don't know. How did you come this meeting? <laughs> yeah, he's your angel, but he doesn't know that you don't know it. Somebody fix it. But there are also angels. As my, grandma, as my grandmother would say, she would say it in Yiddish, uh, from your mouth to God's ears. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he, you know what we believed when we are kids, that everything in the ground, even the ant there that is doing this, this is already God knows and he controls it. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I, you know, there is one way that to describe the, the, the you know, how do you say the to the statistic, what, why, how come this come this and this come this way and this come this way and this can develop this way? The, somebody, God, somebody put all the data somewhere and it's a, it's a super, 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 super computer yeah. that they already know that the, if this DNA will meet this DNA, and if this, 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 that will happen in this year, and this, what, whatever will happen. So if they know it, somebody can read it maybe. Maybe in his DNA, he has some connection, then he can see whatever, but he doesn't understand why he could see. So maybe there is something like that, that the, the control was done before, not on a daily basis. Right. Well, what's interesting about that is, you know, we believe that not everything's predetermined. We have free choice. We have free will. But we also believe, and I'll use the word karma, which is, hey, if you do this, this is going to happen. If you do that, that's going to happen. So, so predicting the future is quite interesting. Yeah. Because if you can predict the future, well, how can you predict the future if not everything's predetermined? Yeah, that's that's why that's why it's a, it's also it's about so what is the free will? If everything is decided, then what is your free will? It's already right. decided. So, but you want it to be this way. But if you don't do it this way, then it it was decided the other way. So you want it to be this way. So please do it this way. Right, right, right. You know? So this is the, the but but in in the in the way that I'm trying to describe is that everything was put already into the machine of the world was put before and already that's why it's already it's already created that this will meet this one and that will happen that will happen but your free choice can change it your free choice mm -hmm. if you believe in something and you are very strong in it you can change it even that was a, the track. The track was like this, but you said no, 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 no. I want it this way, and I, I, I want it this way, and I will fight for it to be this way. And you do something energetic or something, or God will listen to you. Said okay, okay, okay. Don't be nerd, you know. I heard you. Okay, I'll do it. You know, <laughs> so, or something like that. We believe in some people that can cure people, you know. When, when I'll tell you something story about two years ago, two years ago, that, yeah. Sensei was very sick. Mm -hmm. And I told Kyo, listen, I'm coming to pray for him. I want to pray for him. She said, he's not coming off bed. He's sick, he's dead, you know, he's taking medicine and that. And I told her, we, we, I'm coming. It was before, like before the Corona, uh, like half a year before the Corona. So Danny Amit went with me. And uh, after three days, I, I, I won't tell you that in the dojo I was practicing and praying. Praying, 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 just for sensei. That much. No, not strong, just for God, you know, prayers, Jewish prayers, my prayers, I create whatever, whatever. 
I don't know if because of that or because of our good empathy or because since they like us or whatever, or the good food that we prepared, only a lot of lemon, a lot of salad and a lot of things. After three days, Sensei started to sit with us and talk with us about 10 hours. Went out and then she, Kiosh said, oh my God, can I go and visit uh, my, uh, my uh, friend? That she's sick, I want to see her, etc. Until now, I could not do, but, but you, who's you? Well, it's okay. She, she went for two days and then came back. And then, after one month, Sensei visited uh, Tokyo to go for the 10th anniversary of Shotokan Oshima Dojo in Tokyo. So, I don't know if we did it or not, but we believed, I believed that I can change or I can help. That was my belief. Danny believed the same. I don't know if it was Danny's power or my power or more or more or just our love to him, to sense it, that was enough. It was not God interference or anything like that. It was, but that's the same. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's our, our energy or love that helped or our prayer or both. Well, what I what I love about that story, or actually the conclusion, is because you have a balance. On one hand, when you go into it, you play, you believe with a hundred percent of everything you have, and then good news is he gets better. Was it because of the prayer? Because of this? Maybe, maybe not. We'll never know. Yeah. But it doesn't change the fact that you go into it with that mentality. The terrorist is there. I'm not really thinking about it, but I'm going to do whatever I have to do to do it. Maybe I'll win. Maybe I won't win, but I'm still going to go in there and do it. Yeah. Same. <laughs> okay. Last question. Thank you. What advice from all of your experience, what advice can you, do you have for people watching this video? Whether they're karate people, they're not karate people, how best to live life? You know, uh, the word believing is kind of a miracle power. What is believing? Believing in God, believing in yourself, believing in music, believing in your teacher, believing in your father, believing in something. Why? Why believing is important? Because it releases you from obstacles. Because the moment you believe, you can get over because you believe. You find the power inside yourself, inside others. Your mind is open because you can do it. You believe. So, so is it believing in yourself? Maybe. But still it's believing. It's believing I can do it. Believing in my teacher, believing in whatever. It doesn't matter, but I believe. So if you open your heart and your mind and be positive, you know, there are, I met many crooks in my life, not many few. <laughs> there are crooks and there are bad people. There are. It's not a matter. So you have to have a sword in your hand to protect your people, your family, your soul. There are terrorists. What can we do? I don't want to kill anyone. It's not too good to kill. I, I hope I didn't kill him, that his grenade killed him. I don't know. You know, I don't want to take any soul from this world. You know, when I go to the army, now I, I still serve in the reserve, and I'm lieutenant colonel. So I tell the, the new, every time the, the colonel comes, he said, what, 72 years old, what is he doing? I told him, listen, I know to take life, but mostly I know how to save life. Our people life and also enemy life. Because if I'm doing it the right way, I prevent the contraction. I did it. I have a proof that I did it. So if I believe, probably I can do it. And so, so it, it's, I believe it, but I still have the gun in my hand. You know, so you are, you, in this world, unfortunately, we are in a jungle, you know? There is a jungle. It's a different jungle in business, in uh, culture, in, uh, in uh, Corona, in, in arguing about. But if you come with a pure heart, 
with the strength and believing. Still, if somebody come to kill me, I will do it first. Akam leorgecha, shkem leorgo. But if he's not, I will cure him. It doesn't matter if he's my enemy or he's calling himself an enemy or it doesn't matter. I want to help him. I want to support him. I want to be a friend of him, to be a friend of everyone. But I'm ready. I'm ready. So hear me is to be ready. I'm entering into you with love, but this love can be, can kill mm. or can eliminate. If you are higher level, you just eliminate. You don't have to kill. If not, you have to do what you have to do. But we are talking about daily life. We are not killing in daily life. We are going to school. We are going to uh, uh, work. We are going to whatever. We are going to tour. We are going to enjoy our life. So you have to, to give yourself some mission or targets, you know? Or something you want to do, something you love to do. You love to do it, believe you can do it. And do everything in a, in a pure heart in order to reach it. I'm sure that you will reach. I'm sure you can do it. Wonderful words. Thank you. Wonderful words of advice. Thank you very much. So, um, so it's been a wonderful, pure joy having you on the podcast. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to, to speak with you again. Uh, even though I took some of your classes over Zoom, but uh, haven't spoken with you directly in a long time. Uh, I know this is going to be very inspiring to many people to watch, which is why I do it. So thank you again. Please stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, wonderful. See thank you, Ellie. See you in practice. Thank you okay. very much. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed our talk with Ellie Cohen. I certainly did. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the It's Not What You Think podcast. That really helps us to continue to produce these episodes and invite other guests from around the world. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or would like to hear any specific guests on the podcast, please share my email, mortylevine at gmail.com, or visit mortylevine.com. Remember, it's not what you think.